Welcome to the International Space Training Center. You're here today to train for the greatest adventure in the history of mankind, drinking at Disney. Now I know you're probably feeling a little nervous right now, but don't worry. Every sheeter has felt that way at one time or another, even your heroes that host the show every week. But there is one thing they have that you don't have yet, a liver complaint. Before you decide if this show is right for you, let me help you get acquainted with the show. It's powered by solid whiskey and can accelerate from zero to cursive in 60 seconds. So when you hear the words, I've never been to the Edison, you'll definitely want to hang on. As you can see, Three Sheets of the Mouse isn't like anything you've ever experienced before. With all of the drinking, debauchery, and the foul language, kids should head over to the Green Team Training, where they can listen to warm and fuzzy podcasts that pixie dust the shit out of Disney. If you'd like to pussy out, just ask any member of the Three Sheets crew for directions to go straight to hell. As for the rest of you, report to your pre-flight briefing. It's go time. Fuck that little pig. Now that is phenomenal. I love shaking my booty. I've never been to the Edison. I know it sounds sorted, but you'll be rewarded when at last I am given my tools. <laughs> and <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to episode 130 of Three Sheets of the Mouse. We're four average guys with love for all things Disney. I'm Scott and joining me on this week's show are three guys who can't wait to splash and play with Moana, Tim. If you're happy and you know it, destroy Epcot. Mikey. She makes me wet because she conjures. She's like, she's the water bender, so she splashes me with waters. Well, not yet, but soon to come. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I will. Be <laughs> oh, at the God. park when it's. And up. Adam. Comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Adam. <laughs> I am not getting on any of your boats. <laughs> We're here to talk to you about Disney parks, Disney <laughs> booze, and a little bit of debauchery in between. So sit back, relax, uh, grab an English rose, and enjoy the adult side of Disney with Three Sheets of the Mouse. I can't. Why don't Why don't you ever tell people to drink something that they can actually drink? You can. You can what still drink it? the English rose. What is it? I thought well, they got rid of that. Well, Adam, I'm glad you asked. No, they got rid of the Leaping Leprechaun. Uh, you can still That's ask racist. for the English Rose. Uh, it is one ounce of gin, one ounce of apricot brandy, half ounce of sweet vermouth, one ounce of orange juice, half ounce of pineapple juice, and a half ounce of cranberry juice. <coughs> Shake over ice until cold and serve in a very large, tall, uh, stein-looking thing that says Rosen Crown. Stein. That sounds like a lot of work. Okay. Yeah. And no. then garnish with uh, no. garnish with some oranges and cherries. Yeah, it's not nope. Too much work. Sounds like a English version of Jungle Juice. Uh, pretty much is. <laughs> I mean, seriously, why not just have a drink? Just pour a drink. Not build, prepare, engine. Just, just, just pour a drink. But just what's? I, I mean, Mikey, don't you make cocktails at home? Nope. Oh, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to yes, make. Yes, you. Cocktail. Do. We've seen you make cocktails yeah. at home, Mikey. Cracking a while. And Diet Coke is not a cocktail. <laughs> no, true. but he's come up with some interesting concoctions on his own. No, he, that's just because sometimes you don't have enough of one thing to get drunk on, so you put them all together. <laughs> I, I honestly wouldn't call whatever the hell I did with that tequila toward the end of its life expectancy a cocktail. Well, no. But, but no, I just just you, put it in a glass and drink it. You, you, I mean, you did make a you did make a Reggie's Revenge. Uh, no, I I have made cocktails, but I don't, like, go, I'm going to go make a cocktail tonight for three sheets, because there's never enough in the one cocktail to get me through an episode, and I'm not going to be like you, get up and run off and... <laughs> wow. Damn, wow. Wow. <laughs> that escalated quickly. And well, I wasn't going to say it was nice to have you back, go. Mikey, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it wasn't very quick. It was a gentle ramp all the way up to the peak. <laughs> Is that what you're drinking, Scott? No, actually, no, you I'm not. Why mention it? 
<laughs> no, uh, Mikey, what I am drinking tonight is uh, it, it's nearly getting to fall weather, despite it only being August here in the Northeast. Uh, but it's time for some pumpkin ale. And Mikey, which one? Mikey, which one am I going with first? It's going to be Schlafly, because it's already right. said Stein, so you know Schlafly yeah. is coming. It's the Schlafly Pumpkin Ale, the special release uh, every every year this time of year. Ale brewed with pumpkin, uh, spices added, including cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove. It is a wonderful pumpkin beer. Probably the best. It's phenomenal. No. It's dark, nice dark red. Shipyard pumpkin head is the best. Pum- I like pumpkin, pumpkin head. Pumpkin head is... Pumpkinhead is really good. That's a good-looking glass. Nobody drinks out of those glasses, hardly. I do. I do all the time. Yeah. And that's our. We have been breaking juice. more glasses in this house lately than. Oh, I broke one of these. <laughs> I have one left. I do need to put exactly. it in order. Probably when we get back um, from BSB. This is yeah, the. Depending uh, on how much money we spend at BSB. Yeah. Yeah. This is the Three Sheets Nation. Uh, I guess this is a Pilsner glass. What is this? A Pilsner glass? Yeah, right? it's a Pilsner glass. Yeah. Uh, it's established in 2017. Is that the one with the hops? Yep, it's got the hops with the Mickey ears on top. Excellent glass. Does this job well? It does. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It holds liquid. Yes. And dispenses it. True story. Yes. Well, this has been a riveting show. This has been. Tim, what do you got <laughs> in your This glass? is how to use a glass. <laughs> well, I'm headed down south to James Henry Distillery. The little bottles that uh, Ron Lockwood sent us. Ooh. That's really good. That's a Georgia distillery, correct? Yeah. 90 proof. It's... Well, I can't see, I see this small print. My fucking old eyes are... Old. Look. Look with your special eyes. Moonrise <laughs> Distillery in Clayton, <laughs> Georgia. I have the... Uh, it is 90, good. I, I, I already killed mine. Damn, Mikey. I had a bad day when we first got down here to Houston. Had a bad well, it's, day. it's only about a double. This bottle, so. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a whole yeah, lot. Yeah, it's there. what, 125 milliliter? Uh, 100, I think. 100 mil? Yeah, 100 I'm mil. Saving that, I'm saving it for the BSEA show. Uh, Adam, what's in your glass tonight? One of my favorites. I have the um, Basil Hayden's Caribbean Reserve Rye. Oh, that is ridiculously good. It has become one of my true favorites with the rum finish. It's so good. Now, I am I am not... When Basil Hayden first started doing this, when they started with the port uh, the port finish, and what they actually do is they add a little bit of port to the whiskey, so it actually can't technically be bourbon, it can't be rye, it, it's straight rye. It is uh, finished in a barrel, and then they add just a little bit of that port finish, or the, or the actual port itself, or in this case... They add a little bit of rum to the whiskey, but it is dangerously good. I really like it. It's I mean, definitely become one of my favorite bottles, hands down. The, I don't know if it's the rum that balances out the spiciness of the rye, but it is just so dang good. Yeah, it's very smooth. It goes down too way too easy. Way too easy. I had, I had to put that bottle away. Bad, bad things. I put mine away. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> you you certainly put it away, <laughs> and I can actually put it upside down. <laughs> and now and now it's officially gone. Uh, yeah, yeah, really good. Mikey, what about you? What uh, what Mexican soda are you drinking tonight? I have got uh, Senor Knob Creek. Mmm. The uh, hundred proof that was. Uh, Smuggled <laughs> to me by a sheeter today. Oh, nice. contraband! Aaron Bange oh. was able to uh, sneak that. That's awesome. Past security. Woohoo! Go, Aaron. So I, I'm not gonna I'm, ask I'm, how. I'm, I'm drinking it uh, prison wallet. <laughs> Out of a red solo cup. There are there are no Glen <laughs> where I am. You're in, you're in Texas. It's a, hey, how come you didn't? A red solo cup my is cup's fancy. A Glen Karen. Do what? Adam? My cup's good. Yes, I was. I was. Wasn't looking at your cup. Oh, what were you looking at? <laughs> I was. I was actually reading the bottle of my bourbon to know exactly what the hell it was. I was drinking and not just say, <laughs> "I have Knob Creek." <laughs> <laughs> 
was concentrating very hard on fine print to see <laughs> what the details were. It said something about Kentucky. Dick Creek. Yeah, yeah, Kentucky. <laughs> uh, Knob Creek 100 is actually really good for, again, talk about budget bourbons. Um, it, as far as as far as far the budget brand goes, it, it's pretty damn good. Even it's the not Creek as budget as it it's used to be. It's not as budget. You just Knob, keep throwing that word. Well, Knob Creek under, has gone up. No, no, Knob has. Creek 100 is usually about 39 still. I don't well, call that a budget bottle. I've seen it. I've seen it more than that. I, I, yeah, I've seen it upwards of 45 yeah. to 50 lately. Well, it's about the, 44, 45 bucks. Really? And yeah. And yeah. 120 store picks are usually like 50, 54 dollars now. Yeah, they're still 49 it's where crazy. I'm at. Crazy. Yeah. It's a lot for Knob Creek. I'm sorry. It's good, but it's expensive now. It's no wonder you got good shit on your lower shelf. They're all budget whiskeys, Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> Your budget. Depen- yeah. yeah. He's, every whiskey's <laughs> a budget, budget whiskey if you try hard enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I, Knob Creek's pretty good. I have that in a decanter up there. Knob Creek 100. Kind of uh, something to go to when you need to just go to. This past weekend in Anaheim, California, a little convention happened, and uh, lots of things came out of DE23, and we, we really wanted to sit down and focus on the park side of it. Uh, look, we're all excited for Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. Tim and Adam, did you guys watch the trailer? Yes. Yeah, of course. Mikey? It's got a lot of questions that I need answered, and I'm afraid they're not going to. I just... I movies. genuinely don't... I that lightsaber thing at the end. I think I, I it's, wasn't. It's I think it's it, misleading. I think it's very misleading. Well, yeah, no, I I would one hundred percent think that, but I just I just don't know why it is. I don't know why that lightsaber is. I kind of like the lightsaber, but it's extremely misleading. And if you know any of the other lore, you can have a whole bunch of different configurations with a lightsaber. Oh yeah, no, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure she can push a button and a fucking can opener pops out of it. <laughs> you see that meme <laughs> with his uh, Swiss Army knife? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The action movie kid, did, his dad put that together. No, I just it it I I just I'm struggling with the practicality of it. That's all. The only thing that can't be misleading is C3PO with his fucking Sith eyes. That's that's weird. That's weird. <sighs> Imagine if I don't... he's the real Sith Lord this whole time. C three PO. C three PO. We're going. We're we're about show. to go the way of Jar Jar Binks as a Sith Lord too. <laughs> no, Jar Jar Binks no. is an asshole and should be stricken from canon. False. A hundred percent false. He, what is he necessary for? To annoy everybody. Reason. He what does he actually do? Reason. He gets sucked into the. If I'm going to know. No. Yeah. What does he do? What what plot point does he? Integral for that he needs to be part of the canon. I mean, he saved Naboo. Well, he saved Padme. Technically, Anakin saved Naboo. Yeah. Yeah, An- Anakin saved it because that's the way Jar Jar wanted him to. Because okay, he's, yeah. He's again, Lord. you can strike Jar Jar from <laughs> from the gone. record. Yeah. Poof. <clears throat> he's a done. Uh, Poof. He's yeah. a gun. So, I think I think C three PO is about to let everybody know that that they're just all in a simulation. I bet you C-3PO's red eyes is when he gets shut down. <clears throat> no, I don't think so. For the final time. For good. Or it's a reflection of something else, and that's what makes his eyes red. I don't know. It, if you remember Star Wars the- is very good about giving you clips that are so taken out of context that they you won't even recognize them in the movie when you, they finally show up. Like the initial trailer for the last film, it showed, it showed Rey and Kylo having a moment together, but... Yeah, they actually, that was that was two separate, uh, you know, acts of the film. Exactly. So I mean, when it's it when all said and done, it, there's editing. They edited this really interesting. I don't think Ray is a dark Jedi. I just think that's a scene where she's either like 
hiding from somebody. There's or tra- it's, training against herself. Yeah, it, it we're missing stuff. So, well, they want they don't want to give you the movie all the way at once. Look, I, I I'm excited for it. I'm gonna go see it. Well, I, I've said it time and time again. The original trilogy is better, and always will be. Well, duh. Right. I really enjoyed seven. Oh, you mean A New Hope Part 2? I enjoyed it. The reboot? reboot new, or my screen. Yeah, right, it's, I didn't care for the middle eight. I didn't, it was okay. I didn't hate eight. Uh, Laura Dern annoyed me, though. Oh, I can't stand Laura Dern. I don't like her. What? No. No, Mikey. She, don't defend her. Don't defend she her. She does not belong in a Star Wars movie. Nope. She was the girlfriend from Mask. Oh, Jesus. It all goes yeah. back to Mask. It always goes back to Sam Elliott, man. goes back to Rocky Dennis. <laughs> Eric Stoltz, that was his name. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, look, uh, also at uh, D23, there was a little tiny press conference, a small one, uh, about the Disney parks. And merchandising. merchandising. Well, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Target. <laughs> Hashtag coming to a store near us. What? What? <laughs> so tonight we wanted to uh, we want to talk all about the D twenty three announcement uh, with the Disney parks, and uh, and go over kind of the things step by step of what they announced because there was a lot of it. I mean, it was a pretty big morning, uh, but not just Disney parks. There's also a, a uh, we're going to start with this. There's also an announcement about the Disney Cruise Line, a pretty big one. Yeah, two big ones. Well, the first one was the name of the first new ship, which is due out in 2022, and that's Disney Wish. And the, I don't know what you call them, the things on the back of the boat. The character? The, or the, yeah, the, Disney has a name for them, but this one's going to be Rapunzel. She's going to be painting the back of the boat. Um, okay. But the, the big thing that was announced is the addition of a new private island in the Bahamas. And, uh, was it L- Urethra? Urethra? Whoa. Urethra. I'm not staying <laughs> near an island called Urethra Franklin. It ain't happening. <laughs> so the Lighthouse Point is the name Eleuthera, of... Eleuthera. The island of Eleuthera. Yeah, yeah, I know and the name mean. of the island is... Or the name of the place is Lighthouse Point. Yeah, and Joe Rody is designing the island. The way he described it now, it's going to be like a... Um, Old Bohemian town. Yeah, like a marketplace with mm-hmm. artisans and artists and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. The the uh, the artists running of this look amazing. It's got these big. Um, they actually kind of look like essentially they look like those big giant visors. Uh, these big uh, big buildings that have big giant visors shooting out from them for cover. Uh, it looks really cool, very cool. And there's a river that runs right through the middle of the island. The river. Yeah, runs river through runs through it. it? Mm-hmm. According, well, according <laughs> to their. Uh, your artist render. All right. Now, Kurt, I know I might be wrong, but didn't they kind of... We all kind of know knew that they were getting this island. Yes, yes. But we had not seen any any kind of renderings on or theming of what it's going to look like. So now this is a, kind of my problem throughout most of this. All the stuff that they announced were previously announced. Except for like a few select things. And I'm sure, we'll get to those select things later. But a lot of this stuff... We kind of already knew about how we got more details on. It was more Granted, like we got more details and more like pictures of and video of or what have you, yeah. or more concept art for. But and that's but, and that's kind of what they've done in the past. They've basically announced things all year long and then more reveal. I don't think they did that though with like Avatar. No, because uh, no way. And I know they didn't do it with. Um, the Mickey's Runaway Railway. They didn't do it with Star Wars. I when everything was kept so tightly under wraps when things used to be announced. Now we're getting drips and drags, and D twenty three wasn't this huge surprise announcement. No, wait like a minute. It used we, to be. We've known about Mickey's Runaway Railway for like. We didn't get a details year. until for two years. We didn't get details. Yeah. Last D twenty three was announced at two years ago. Yeah, right. Oh. Oh. You mean the. Things that they have announced during the year and then kind of followed up with them at D23. Is that what you're... What, like, what's... No, I'm saying that they were announced at D23 and then the project started. 
Yeah, I mean, well, Fantasyland. Well, the whole, that. Oh, the whole Epcot thing was Fantasyland. That was all announced at D twenty three. We didn't know too much about New Fantasyland until it was announced. We had an idea it was coming, right. but we didn't know what attractions were going in it. We didn't know. At least I don't think we did. I don't. I mean, no, no, that was pretty much that was pretty years. much an announcement at D twenty three. We didn't know anything about what I'm what saying. New Epcot until D twenty three. Yeah, I mean, we, all, well, of, we, all of almost all of New Epcot is new. And we knew about, uh, we knew that they were doing a lot of shit to Epcot. We did not we didn't have any clue as to some of the things in there. We'll get to talk about in a minute, but a lot of those things were pretty shocking. I know one of them is pretty shocking. A bunch of them are pretty shocking, actually. Just one for me was I like totally jaw dropped and uh, excited yeah. about. Yeah, me too. Um, but let's get into uh, let's get in let's finish up with the the Disney Wish. Uh, the new cruise ship will have a partnership and ongoing relationship with Make a Wish, so they're gonna um, they're actually gonna have an uh, on stage for a uh, they had them on stage and they kind of announced that that this is gonna be the official like Wish ship for Make a Wish. So you'll you'll see a lot of partnership with with Disney Make a Wish to send kids on I don't the think uh, Disney they cruise. They said here. that we watched it. I don't I, think yeah, they said that. I didn't that. get that from the. They just at all yeah. From they what just they said had it on was, stage. Yeah. They just segued right into some tear jerking video of Make a Wish yeah. kids. Yeah, and, and now make Bob Chappick was on the board now and Yeah, and that they're partnering closer than ever. It oh, said okay. nothing yeah. about it. Didn't it said about it the said game. they're gonna the, the cruise ship will have an ongoing relationship with Make a Wish here on the D twenty three page. But they all have an ongoing relationship yeah. with Make a Wish. That's not new. Oh. I I would would it be surprised since it's a bigger ship that there are more areas for wish families it's either that or it might be more ada compliant i can picture that maybe being a thing but i don't remember well at least on the i didn't read the d23 page i just kind of watched it and took in whatever i didn't really have time to read it but i mean what is that i get the there's enough vagueness in there that that it could be anything they want it to be well of course that's disney for you uh, but they did they did show the uh, the atrium. It's going to be inspired by Disney fairy tales. It kind of looks like the ballroom from Cinderella. Beauty and the Beast. I, I saw Cinderella in that ballroom. Oh, see, I saw the 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 scene where Belle is coming down the stairs, and uh, on the opposite side is Beast coming down the stairs. It looks nice. It looks, but they already. I don't think they do that because they already have a Lumineers on Lumieres on the cruise. Well, I don't. Ships. I don't think the uh, the main restaurant is going to be themed to Beauty and the Beast. I just think I think that the atrium kind of it, the atrium reminded me of Beauty and the Beast. Well, this mm-hmm. ship is going to have more restaurants than the other ones because it's bigger. Yes, and it's going to hold the same amount of people as the Dream and the Wonder. Well, but then why would it mean more more restaurants? Because they'll have more room. I think more, they said more dining options. So I you're think not, uh, you're not rotating twice, or uh, you know, two, three restaurants twice in a, in a cruise. You mean you don't have to do animators' palette twice? Right. Sign me up. It would be nice if Disney went the way of other cruise ships, where they had uh, no set rotation, more so um, kind of open dining. See, I like the set rotation, but I want more. I want more options. I I would agree with you. Three options for dinner, uh, which you go, which you generally go to twice or three times during a trip. Uh, you see, but here's the thing: this is the Disney is the only cruise line that still has that rotational. kind of dining atmosphere you, where you're sitting in the same restaurant or you have the same wait staff. Old school cruising used to be this way: you didn't go to a different restaurant every night; you went to the same restaurant every day. In the same seat with the same staff. And now you're getting into different styles of cruising where they have like the bigger ships with the 4,000 restaurants and everything's an upcharge. That concerns me if that's the direction they're going. Because Disney cruises are expensive enough. I don't think that's the direction they're going because I mean they'll still only have like like Apollo and a, and a Remy, but they're going to add a regular rotational restaurant to it. Correct. See, I think that- more lounges. I think it's going to be you're going to have maybe four or I five so. different restaurants to go to, and you'll have, you know, if you if you, because again, there's nothing less than a five night cruise, is there? Or no, there's a couple. Of yes, cruises. we did a yeah. we there's did a three four night for Bahamas. There's for four. I thought yours was five night. No, it was nope. four. Yeah, and we're doing a three night for Bahamas for January. 
All right. I mean, I, I just think that, honestly, I think that they'll uh, have like four or five restaurants where you can rotate through. So you're not doing the same one on a five-night cruise. But on the seven-night cruises, each time we went to the restaurant, you had a different thing, f- feeling to it. Yeah. I, it, so They I changed mean, the menu I, a little I, bit. I don't have a problem visiting the same restaurant twice on the seven-night. Because, I mean, when we went to Artima- Animator's Palette one night, it was one thing. The second time we went, we did the drawings, where they animated our drawings. So, well, I, I think we'll see the bigger ships be reserved more for not. the longer transatlantic cruises and the, the Mediterranean cruises. But they're not doing that now. No, the magic generally goes across the Atlantic. Because the transatlantic doesn't make sense for the bigger ships because they can't fit in those smaller ports. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for the if you're going through like the uh, Mediterranean or through like the North Atlantic, uh, generally that's the magic because again you're going through smaller areas. And the same thing with Hawaii when you think about it, because Hawaii you're looking at smaller ports. Mm-hmm. Caribbean is where this big mega ships go. That's wide open. Good for, it's wide open. Good they are hurricanes. they're built to handle them. They're built to handle those larger ships. Yeah. Plus, with all of these uh, private islands being built up, uh, you're getting private docks as well, so they can handle mm-hmm. these big ships. Because, I mean, remember when the Magic first came out and you had to, like, dock away from the actual dock and take a no. boat out? The Magic was the only... The Disney Cruise Line was the only cruise line for a long time that you didn't have to use tenders to get anywhere with. Oh, well, then it was other other cruise lines or something like that. Other cruise lines, usually for the smaller docks, you have to use a tender. Disney Cruise Line did not want that originally. So they only would dock in ports that would be able to... The ships would actually be able to pull up and you wouldn't have to tender. Weren't we in Bermuda and there was a ship off the coast that they had to be tendered? People had yeah. to be tendered in? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't doubt it. Yes. I mean, some of these are massive ships. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's why they didn't make the the newer ships as big as some of like your Royal Caribbean ship, where you have an ice skating rink and, and freaking go karts and all this other nonsense. Skyscraper inside. Yeah, exactly. Uh, some of the other announcements this week at D twenty three. We'll we'll stay away from the parks at this point because we're you know we'll run through the smaller things. Uh, Disney is having a select partnership with Target, so it's going to be a Disney store. Inside in the store, kind of thing. So Target and Disney are going to have uh, uh, collaborative, uh, creative retail that will uh, kind of have some sort, of, sort of experimental retail merchandising, merchandising uh, at the launch of twenty-five different Disney stores inside of or twenty-five different Target stores nationwide, starting October fourth. So pretty soon. And one of them is the Target now neighborhood. Woohoo! Strasbourg Target. What? what? <laughs> so yeah, a, a, a shop inside a shop. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it's, it's been, done, been before. done before. Yeah. No, th- I mean, there's been a lot of a lot of stores will do this. I think Sephora did this with J.C. Penney for a while. Yeah. Still does. They still do. Um, so interesting to see that Disney is partnering with Target to create a store inside a store. I think there is uh, some kind of maybe market testing on this thing to see if whether or not Target is still the premier place to go? Well, I want to say it's starting in 30 and then they have another what? 40. 40, 40 by next year. Another for, A total 40 or another, another 40? 40, 40 in addition, addition yeah. to make it 70. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a well, pretty decent chunk. And especially I mean, if they're looking at locations that don't necessarily already have a Disney store close by. Yeah. I just want to know if they're going to be called Target cast members. <laughs> I don't you know. Good question. Well, that's what I was going to ask. You say well, it's a store within a store. Does it have its own cash no. Lo- no. register? Oh, no. Okay, no. then. How well, long before Disney buys Target? That's that's what I was thinking. This is, is a test to see that. whether or not Disney wants to buy out Target. Well, the, the biggest news is they're putting a Target on Disney property in Orlando. Are they really? Yeah. Springs? That was also announced. Well, I, I think it's going to be in the Springs area. Probably. Okay. Hey, you know what? Honestly, it's a good thing because uh, if you need to run out and grab stuff, the minivans can take you there then. Yeah, no doubt it'll be a 24-hour Greatland. Oh, I'm sure it will. 
I'm sure it will. And that would be nice for Disney to have. That would be really awesome for Disney to have on property because, again, uh, the nearest Walmart or Target is is a decent trip off of uh, Disney property. That might also put a hurting on Garden Grocer. Well, and... Yeah, oh, it's going to put a will. huge hurting on that. If they open up a supermarket on, on Disney property kind of like that, and probably have some kind of deal with delivery. With yeah, them too. yeah. Garden Grocer and uh, Instacart could put a hurting on that. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it for the outside Disney parks uh, news. Over at Disney Springs, they have announced a creative partnership with uh, between not just Disney Animation Studios, uh, not just Disney Imagineering, but also Cirque du Soleil. So the first. Disney themed Cirque du Soleil show will premiere in uh, what was it 2022 or 2020 uh, March 2020 March of 2020 so real soon now who's running out for this one uh, I'm not spending that kind of money on it look it's expensive it is it's I think between $80 and $155 a ticket um even if well, you're doing is that it, the official price because those were the old prices um I don't know it's probably then it, then if those are the old prices it's jacking up so if that goes up, I mean if we're looking well here's the thing we have Broadway what an hour and a half two hours away yeah I won't pay those prices for Broadway. now I'm gonna take a certain amount of time away from my Disney vacation where everything's kind of already paid for mm-hmm and spend a f- like an hour and a half, two hours, whatever it is, in a stadium watching a show. I, I just don't see myself doing this. I- I've never been to the movies in Disney World. Even, for this even when we would do the packages, before we would DVC, we would do the packages and you'd get you know, the coupons for this, the coupons for that. We used to get the coupons for Cirque du Soleil, which made it kind of affordable. Yeah, it was like 10% off or 20% off. It was like, yeah, it was like 20, 20% off, something like that. We never would do it because it's just not something that I want to sit and do while I'm at Disney World. Yeah, I mean, look, the only Cirque du Soleil show I've ever seen is Vegas. It was Beatles Love, and that's primarily because the Beatles were the draw. Now, if this was in Vegas... Well, you're wrong. The Beatles suck. I'm just <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's overrated. I mean, they had that somebody. one song. Um, if this were in Vegas, and I'm in Vegas for three nights, and you do a show, maybe I would do that. I would consider it. But that's Vegas. Vegas. Right, it's Vegas. What you go to Vegas for the shows and the game line. Right. Disney, in, again, unless maybe a hurricane's rolling through and I got nothing better to do but sit inside and watch a, watch a show, maybe. Well, if a hurricane's rolling through and they shut down all the transportation around the park and you're stuck in your, your room pretty much anyhow, <laughs> it, it's not going to matter. How about, a, okay, a tropical store. Even though, I mean... I don't think... They're, they're not going to shut it down It does Disney. sell out. Yeah. It I mean, there has, there's will. a reason for it. And I'm sure it will, but it, it's just... Not something on my it's radar. It's not my thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds cool. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be really nice. Uh, they're going to do good things with it. It's going to be acrobatic. It's one of those things where I kept on saying, oh, we should try and do this. It's sort of like how we keep on saying, oh, we should try and get to Universal, and we never make it there. It, it's that kind of situation. Yeah. 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 Um, Mikey, what about you? What do you think? I know you're a big fan of unitards. His cousin's one. Yeah, I was about to say, your cousin's a unitard. He is. <laughs> I don't know. It's like I always wanted to do a cert whatever thingy even when I was in Vegas, but it's like, eh. It is an investment in time and money. I mean, that's... Well, a park day. Yeah. If you're if you're if you're not AP, that is yeah. a full day in a park. How how long is a typical search? It's show? more than a full two, day in a park. Two and a half well, hours. I mean, right. it's, it's usually and, and, and yeah, a, and a quick and service. A full day in a quick service. Well, I mean, you figure even if you go for the cheap seats, which is running you eighty nine dollars, right? Right. Yeah, we'll call it. We'll probably call it. Prices. I bet you. I bet you anything. It's going to be about a hundred bucks for the cheap seats. 100 to 110, I would assume. Mm-hmm. So that's a park take. That's a day pass. Yeah. yeah. And that's not even talking like if you had multi-day passes and all that. that that's a full day's pass. That's a one-day pass. That's a walk-up on the in the off-season and buy a ticket to Epcot. 
to any, to majority of them. I 110 yeah, covers you. It's yep. it's a lot of money. It's, it's definitely money. a lot of money. Uh, but no, the, it, it will have Disney music, so it, it's it sounds nice. It sounds like it'll be good, but uh, not something that I'm jumping to go get to. Yeah, I'm not champing at the bit to go there. See, I used the right, right mic. Yeah. Champing. Um, Inspired by Disney does not necessarily mean that they're going to tell a Disney story. Yeah. All right, let's 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 head around the world for a little bit. Um, over at uh, Disney Hong Kong, they've announced a, a transformation to its castle. Now, this is the only castle in the world that is not... Um, it, it's not themed to one Disney princess, and, and it's, it's always been that way. So what they decided to do is they decided to expand it, make it bigger, make it you know, much more elaborate, and they're actually going to make it to honor 13 different Disney princesses. So not just... One, but 13 different heroines. Um, it's going to have things like Snow White's Apple, Cinderella's Coach, Belle's Rose, uh, on the parapets, on the on the, uh, the uh, walls. It, it looks pretty nice. It looks really cool. The kind of Oprah Winfrey. You're getting a castle. You get a you're castle, and you get a castle. You're getting a castle. <laughs> Tom Cruise is jumping up and down on the throne. Yeah. Uh, but it's also going to house a new Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. So uh, if you're going to Disney Hong Kong, you can also get uh, dolled up like uh, your favorite Disney princess. I like the new castle. I think kind of looks it looks awesome. really good. I, and, and I and I appreciate this. I appreciate them doing something different with it with the castle. Uh, if you've seen pictures of it before, it's kind of bland and boring and nothing special. So it'll be nice to see them do something different with it. Over at uh, Disney's. Uh, Disneyland Paris Resort the Disney's Hotel New York is going to be open there. Now this is basically a, a, a nod to the art of Marvel uh, not just uh, kind of this uh, themed hotel but it's actually going to kind of transport you back to the 1920s New York and have a really cool artwork from Marvel um, so 80 years worth of Marvel art and the artist uh, guests will find Marvel art at every turn throughout the hotel where more than 300 pieces will be on display the guest rooms will include one-of-a-kind themed suites favor- featuring your favorite superheroes who will also meet fans in a, in a dedicated space within the hotel. Something that's not been done in, in really any Disney park. Or any Disney I, resort. No, yeah, it looks amazing from like the concept art that I've seen. But this was previously announced, but now we're getting a little more concept art for it. Originally, I thought, there were rumors that it was going to be a Stark Tower. Yeah, it was supposed to be kind of like a 1920s Howard Stark Tower. Uh, mm. Now it's just a 20s Art Deco, which I'm fine with. Yeah. It looks it looks beautiful. It looks me, amazing. What they showed it's in a really good location too. Except for the Avengers compound. Yeah, we, I, I mean not quite... compound camp yeah. campground. That's not right either. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me tonight. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, so over at Disney Paris, but also uh, you know kind of what Disney is now being uh, being kind of. It's kind of the thing now. They're doing the little Control C, Control V. Over at Disney Paris and Disney California Adventure is going to be uh, Avengers Campus. So both of both of the parks are going to get a fully immersive land, which will be linked together in a global story. So each of them will have. They'll look similar, but they'll each have a different story, and they'll be part of a, a part of the story together. Uh, as the Avengers set out to recruit the next generation of superheroes, um, it looks it looks awesome. I'm not going to lie. I'm not even a huge Marvel fan, but this looks really cool. You get to fly a Quinjet. Yep. That's only in California. Yeah, you get to... So I'm, I'm thinking they're going to have individual maybe e- maybe not e-ticket attractions, but each park I think is going to get different attractions. And it is a campus, so I mean, I guess there'll be similarities between them all. Yeah. But I don't think they have announced everything for every park. No, 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 no. This was basically, here's what, here's the concept of what we're doing. This is subject to change. This is basically uh, the Fantasyland version uh, of Avengers. So what you see is not the final product. Now, they did announce the that California Adventure will be getting the Worldwide Engineering Brigade, a.k.a. Web, which will house the very first Disney ride-through attraction to feature Spider-Man. It's funny this was announced this week on the heels of the fallout yeah, between Sony and Disney. Yeah, it's kind of strange if you ask me. Really strange. 
It was sort of like, well, we gotta announce it. We're already halfway committed to building it yeah. kind of situation. So in this new brand new experience, uh, guests will take a sp- test spin on the Web Slinger vehicle and uh, essentially through, I guess, a 3D uh, process, you'll sling webs just like Spidey as you help uh, collect spider bots that have run amok around the city. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Uh-huh. The, the concept here <laughs> they showed it looked like it was a combination of VR and kind of look like um, what is it called? Um, the Void? The, no, not, not the Void. void. Um, the tune. The fuck? Why can't I think anymore? Toy today? Story Midway Mania. Toy Story Midway Mania. Yeah, I think it's going to be similar to that. Feel You're going to have this like. It. Uh, these glasses, and then there'll be a projection screen in front of you, which will respond to your uh, your device that's probably going to be on your hand or in your in your hand in this ride vehicle that you'll shoot out the webs to help collect the spider bots. So uh, they did also announce uh, both Hollywood studio or both Hong Kong and or I'm sorry, both Paris and California Adventure will get the PYM test kitchen where. I guess it's PYM Technologies or PIM. PIM Technologies. Yeah, PIM. Yeah. PIM Technologies. PIM. We'll use their latest inventions to grow and shrink food, and all around the campus you'll encounter heroes such as Black Widow and uh, Ant Man. Yeah, that, that's what's that's just confusing to me. I was like, really? What? I don't get this. I, I don't understand I, this. I mean, like a tiny hot dog, please. Yeah. Well, you know, you have problems getting kids to eat regular food, or or it'll like faux. You'll you'll take this tiny hot dog, and then all of a sudden through a video process it'll become big and then they serve it to you just fucking serve the food I don't need a show I, I, I don't my... understand this I, I, I'll nuggets. see what it is I just yeah, don't get the concept yet that's why I don't go to Cosmic Rays because I don't want to show with my brother <laughs> or you don't want a hockey puck with your brother I don't mind the show I don't mind all that but I just don't get how this is going to work yeah, neither do I. and it's, it's also going to be I want to say they announced it was going to be counter service and yes. Quick service and, and table, um, service. Table, service. table service. Quick service during the day, table service at night. And, I mean, unless they're doing something really spectacular, I don't think this is a must-do for me. No. Yeah, I mean, even at, well, there's not, not there's a decent amount of food over at California Adventure. There's a heck of a lot better selection in, yeah, you have, um, what is it called? Lamplight Lounge. Yeah, there's a lot to eat. Yeah, and it's good food. I mean, no, I, I, I mean, steakhouse is in. No, no, no. Uh, Carthay Circle Theater or Carthay, Carthay yeah. Circle Restaurant. Mm-hmm. You get the uh, the Italian restaurant. What was it? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, something. It was decent. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. I mean, it, I'm sure the food's gonna be fine, but it's just like an unnecessary step in your in your food yeah. preparation. We'll see. Like, I'm holding gimmick. out hope for it, but this doesn't exist. Yeah, me. it's gimmicky. gimmicky. Very gimmicky. Yeah, it better it better damn well be made by a little bitty two inch tall person. <laughs> oh shit! That Before would be fucking me. awesome. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll go now. Now we're talking. They better actually have Paul Rudd in his in his Ant Man costume, two inches tall, back there making oh, my fucking burger. Oh, he'll do it. Burger. He'll do it. I don't know. I would I would I would equally be okay with just uh, the tacos that regular sized guy was eating. In Endgame, those are good looking tacos <laughs> or normal size. Hey, normal sized guy. <laughs> uh, uh, the so these will these all of these attractions are going to open up in Anaheim and Paris uh, as part of Phase One. But uh, they did announce that a new e-ticket attraction would, would be planned to open later in Phase Two, which is kind of their their new model. Is Phase One, Phase Two is now. Uh, but guests will be able to step aboard a Quinjet and fly alongside the Avengers in an epic adventure to Wakanda. And beyond, in the upcoming attraction, they will feature an all-new innovative ride system. Um, yes. Yeah. Please, thank you. It, it's, 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 it's all in. Is this basically flight of passage? No. no. No, this sounds a little bit more like uh, Smuggler's Run. No. I think nope. this is going to be more like the newer one. You guys are going to hate me, but I need to look up what a Quinjet is. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Really? What newer one? The one that's not open yet. Is that Smuggler's Run? No, that's, no, that's, uh, Rise, that's the Rise of the Resistance. But if Ry- this is I supposed to simulate be... flying, yeah. then it wouldn't be that I think it's one. supposed to be more of Rise of the Resistance. No, I, I, I don't think gonna it's going to be, be more like Smuggler's Run. I bet you anything this is going to be like the Tony Stark adventure in uh, Hong Kong. 
No, this is all. What? Yeah, well, I mean, the, well, the key here is all new ride system. Yeah, look at well, looking at the window, it's very similar to the window in the Millennium Falcon. It's got multiple uh, screens. Yeah, I bet you this is Rise of the Rise of the or, No Smuggler's Run. Um, See, but why then announce a new ride system? That doesn't make sense. I don't know. It looks like a flight simulator. Maybe it's a new flight simulator. Well, but you, I also noticed that there are three, there are rows of seats, and they look like individual seats too. So yeah. I don't know what exactly it is. Mm-hmm. Like in in Smuggler's Run, you're sitting in a cockpit, pretty much. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is something. From looking at the artwork, it doesn't really convert well. Yeah, it's it's got to be a bigger jet where you're more like a passenger, right? From what it looked like, you or you're sitting in like your. Well, you're supposed to be a hero and help the heroes. I, I don't know what this is going to be, but okay. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to it. If it opens, it will. <laughs> well, I, I think it'll open. If they don't well, just spend all their money on something else, it's it's phase two with no date yeah. at all this announced. I'm known like there's no even construction date. So, yeah, mm, and if so we'll see. Anything from Disney phase two, sometimes they either don't happen or they get drastically changed and penny pinned. Yeah, just ask. They're going to wait until the Avengers are just almost irrelevant and it's too late to, to do it, and then it's going to hit. Mm-hmm. Okay, oh, okay, so we're not talking about any of the TV, right? No, no, we're not going to talk about the TV. We can do that in a shorty or a quickie yeah. or uh, another episode. All right. Um, so look, a, d- a dinky? Yeah. So, I mean, Avengers Campus <laughs> does look pretty cool. Uh, not even an, an Avengers fan, but uh, it, it looks like it'll be a nice, welcoming uh, addition to uh, both California Adventure and Disneyland Paris, especially because all they had to do was close uh, Bugs Life. Poor flick. Uh, it was a poor area. <laughs> it was bad. It was really it was bad. bad. It was basically Dino Land. Yeah. Fucking high like hey. poster. No, it was more... Well, I mean, it was more kiddie themed though. Hey, there's hope for D25. In two years. I mean, it's still it's D23. Still D23. I know. It's always I know. D23. I know it is. Okay. 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 Insert Scott crickets Matt. here. Mm. Well, I mean, your um, Destination D is next year, too, don't forget. Yes, maybe that's when we'll get the Dino alternator. That thing needs to close so bad. I, I think Dino Land needs a lot of I don't work. mind Dinosaur. I don't like Dino. I don't like the attraction Dinosaur, but this is really off topic. Dino. Yeah. Dinosaur needs to be a little bit brighter. It is so dark in there. It's so well, dark well, because none of the electricity in the dinosaur right? <laughs> yeah, You can't just yeah, hang a lamppost and call it okay. In the middle of the Cretaceous period. <laughs> it's, it's ambient light from the falling meteors, Scott. There is no ambient light. Don't you want to be immersed? You ever heard of, of an eclipse, Scott, when something passes in front of the sun? <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, let's stick with this real quick because something that was teased to be announced that didn't was announced that didn't get announced was an e- another e ticket attraction for Animal Kingdom. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, I didn't. I don't remember hearing that. I heard a bunch of stories well, about it, and nothing got announced. There was a lot of rumors about Rafiki's Planet Watch, which ended up being reopened, <laughs> or is going to reopen. Um, it is already reopened, isn't it? It is already is it? reopened, okay. I want to say. Yeah. So They're using it for that fancy dinner thing. Yes, mm-hmm. you're right. Yeah. The Lion King. Yep. Uh, something that was supposed to be going to uh, Animal Kingdom is actually going to be opening up at Shanghai's Disney uh, Parks, and that is Zootopia Land. That's That was announced prior to that? It was announced prior to that. They just kind of uh, did some more artwork, uh, showed, showed some more of the uh, artist rendering. Looks cool again. Um, not running over to Shanghai for this, though. No. No, there's I other things they need to go to Shanghai for. <laughs> Pirates Would of the that Caribbean. be Frozen Land? Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. Oh, yeah. That one, definitely. <laughs> uh, but over, Land. over at... Um, you know which park was really absent before we move over? Yeah. Japan. Yeah, Tokyo. Well, they got the announcement last year, Des- uh, Destination D, where they're doing the uh, the Frozen section at, at uh, Tokyo Disneyland. Yeah, but there were no updates. No, at no all. updates. They did update Hong Kong's uh, Frozen Land, so Hong Kong will get Frozen Land as well, including uh, Wandering Oak and Sliding Sleigh. Say that five times fast. Mm, Fucking no. alliteration. <laughs> 
So this is basically a bobsled coaster um, that is going is going to be inspired by Disney's uh, Frozen Ever After, and give you a winter and summer feel where you'll ride around on a bobsled on a uh, kind of a wooden ish track, uh, a so wooden looking track. It's the track. Matterhorn. It's the matter. Well, yep. it looks more more akin to um, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Seven Dwarves. Yeah. I was going to say, this is probably going to end up being about the same size yes. and speed as Seven Dwarves on a, on just kind of a little mountain with some snow and you're, I don't, I don't know. There's something about it bugs me when they're trying to make it, make you feel like you're zipping around Arendelle and the scaling just isn't going to work. Yeah. So this one, in, in this ride, uh, Sven and Olaf will uh, pull your, your bobsled, your sleigh to the top of the lift hill. And then they'll let you go, and you'll go sliding down the hill. Uh, this is basically Seven Dwarfs My Train. Now, I know Seven Dwarfs uses the animated silhouettes. Mm-hmm. If they were to somehow sneak in an animatronic and hide it behind some boulders or whatever to make it look like Sven is leading, or Kristoff is leading Sven, is pulling you up this, that would be pretty damn banging. It would be, but I don't think Kristoff was mentioned in this. Oh, well, you just said Kristoff and Sven. No, Olaf and Sven. Olaf. Olaf, whatever. Olaf and they've all got they've all, they've all got carrots in their pocket. <laughs> so, yeah, Olaf will probably be riding on Sven, and then they'll take you uh, up the lift hill, uh, a.k.a. the Seven Dwarfs Mine, and then you'll uh, zip down the hill and slide around, and um, it'll be a minute and five seconds later, and you're done. Yep. So. Yeah. All right. Well, on to uh, on to our favorite place in the world, and that is Walt Disney World. Lots of stuff was announced at Epcot. You gonna shoot your wad here? No, you not have yet. to. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, you, you have to save Epcot for last because the most announcements were for Epcot. So. Right. That's what I mean. You can't. Pre- I mean, well. pretty much everything was Epcot, except for a little bit minor uh, Star Wars Land and some uh, resort news. Let's start there. Resort news. Well, let, yeah, we should start with the Star Wars Resort, unless that's the wad. No, no, that's not the wad. No, you can't blow your wad in the Star Wars Resort. Even though, even though that's amazing in itself, you can't blow your wad in the Star Wars. Well, that well, would you, be my you, whole you can wad. you can blow your yeah. That'd <laughs> yeah, be, yeah, that'd be that'd that'd be a couple of years of wads. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I would have to start collecting extra wads <laughs> Somebody else to send afford me your this. <laughs> I'm We're not taking donations of wads, please. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to yes, need to uh, rob, be a GoFundMe wad page. Yeah. <laughs> um, Go wad me. Specifically, Scott, he hadn't had anything hard in his mouth since he got married. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need to go rob a wad store in order to go there. <laughs> I need, Scott says, I need all the wads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I w- I'm going to have to have all the wads in order to, to afford to go there. Uh, but let's start with the Disney Reflections, a lakeside community oh. of soberness and happiness. I'm going to have to sell a kidney because I want points at this resort. Uh, It looks really nice. More wads for Tim. (laughs) So prepared to hate this resort. Yeah, and then the concept art has now come out. And like, oh, fuck, take my money. Yeah, so plan to debut in late 2020. um, Disney's Reflections, a lakeside lodge, has, has taken its inspiration from sort of craftsmen, but also new age craftsmen. And... I mean, let's call this Malibu. It looks like Malibu decor, like deco. It really, it really does look like. Uh, well, it's kind of a mix between Malibu and like Aspen because you have yeah A frames, the A frames, and the and then the, these like winged uh, awnings, awnings and balconies. And the tree houses do kind of look like Malibu beach houses. Yeah, you had me at balconies, Scott. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> Uh, but I'll leave the some one wads. thing that I'm so excited for for this resort, yes, the tree houses, the, no. the A-frames, it's the restaurant. The restaurant. We live the in restaurant. an A-frame. Why am I excited about go stay in an A-frame? <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful A-frame though. It's not in Disney. <laughs> the restaurant, Princess and the Frog inspired restaurant. Yes, so you'll get a. Now, what are they, did they actually give a name to this yet? No, no, no. I mean, a, 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 apart from. Should be Tiana's place, but it sounds like it's going to be more like a, a, the Bayou thing. See, they can't. If they're going to call it Tiana's place, it should have been in the Port Orleans Resort. But oh, I agree. It's inspired by Princess and the Frog, so it's probably not going to be completely Princess and the Frog themed. But close enough, I think that it's going to make me want to go there. 
No, it it absolutely will be, and I and I think the um, uh, I think the the, the food's going to be really good because it's going to be sort of like a New Orleans style feel. Uh, it, it sounds like it's going to be on the bayou, so on like the on the waterfront. Uh, it's going to be more of a uh, more of a style that is is befitting a lakeside lodge. So uh, I don't think it's going to be basically her New Orleans restaurant, but more like more like when she was a frog and uh, supposed to be. Now the the really cool effect they had were fireflies uh, supposed to be in the trees or in the in the theme. So see how they do with that. But it well, looks really good cool. over in Animal Kingdom. For the Rivers of Light show, so mm -hmm. I mean that's probably the best part of that show. So yeah. if they can pull it off over in Reflections. It's going to be great. Yeah, so this will be I, a standalone table service right on Bay Lake. I wonder if they're going to do kind of like what they did over at the Coronado, where they built the restaurant out onto the lake. If they're going to like push this out onto the Bay Lake for a little, a little bit. It seems like that they. Would be pretty cool. It seems like they will. It seems like it's going to be pushed out onto the water. Like the actual restaurant will be over the water. That would be cool. Well, don't forget. Don't forget where this is being, what this is being built on. There could be a pool, a large enough pool of water there. Oh yeah, left over from River Country days that they can just kind of plop it right on there. Oh, they certainly will. All they're going to do is just throw pylons down, 120 feet deep, and pray that they don't sink. <laughs> yeah, well, gotta get below the swamp. Yeah, <laughs> that's why they're going 120 feet deep. Um, the interior looks nice. It's going to have. Uh, uh, pretty cool kind of these uh, ceiling lights these chandeliers um, it's going to have a great view of Bay Lake this is this is definitely a restaurant I need to try I just need to try it because it's Tiana yeah. dude those lo those cabins man maybe we can get our, our resident uh, Prince of the Frog movie star to get us a discount yeah maybe there you she, go she's got to be Sydney she's got to be uh you know, got to have some like discounts for that. Some of those royalty checks coming in, right? Right. All right. Um, staying over at uh, <laughs> Disney World, let's go. You know what? Let's let's talk about Star Wars. Speaking of resorts, the Halcyon was announced. Now, yes. the Halcyon is the name of the Star Cruiser that you will board if you and your loved ones have a kidney to sell. Yep. Yep. Loved one. Yep. One. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> we don't have no yummy, so I'm, I'm, I'm going. Uh, this has basically been announced as a cruise line on land. So you will you will board the Halcyon, uh, and you will you will spend a, a minimum of three nights there. Two. No. Two it's nights. It's two nights. It's two a night two night experience. Two night two day experience. That's two it. night two day experience, where you will be immersed in uh, Star Wars for two days. You will uh, eat. Breathe, live Star Wars for two days. You will be transported via a special transport vehicle, which they, they announced, which was looks really cool. Mm -hmm. And you will be you, you will never essentially see the outside world for two days. Right. Except when you go on your shore excursion. Well, two. that's that's still part of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. True. So my question I am all in. What? <laughs> All in. Take all I'm the all in too. Yeah, absolutely. But my question is, <laughs> the concept art, they showed the concept art of this ship. Which so is the outside the of this hotel going to be shaped and look like this ship? Well, from what I remember though, at least remember, like, what I kind of remember is that you actually get on at a launching bay. Right. And you're launched up to the ship. And, and, so and, and, the ship yeah. is probably going to be hidden. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Adam said what you're going to be, what's going to happen is you'll you will enter into the port, and then you are going to be transported into space to the actual ship. So I don't think you're going to board near the hotel. You're going to board no, on no, these no, transport no, no, vehicles. Hydrolators. Yeah, you're yeah. exactly. You're gonna, it'll be a hydrolator <laughs> type of thing. You're gonna. But here's okay. Here's here's my my question here. Um, you're getting on these vehicles. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're uh, obviously you're going to arrive at the airport, okay? Let's just let's just gameplay this. From I get on an airplane in Arkansas, I fly to Orlando, I, I arrive at the airport, and I'm going to get on this vehicle, and I'm supposed to because they want this to be fully. I'm supposed to believe that vehicle is the one that delivers me to the ship. 
what well, I no, think, you probably take magic express. No, it's going to be exactly. I right. mean, no, you could, no. How it's working is from the airport. You're going to take. You're, I'm sure you'll have. Think of it more like a cruise dock. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to take the where bus from the airport. Like you can take a bus. You can take a public transportation. You could take an Uber to the front of your of your dock. The, yeah, the cruise terminal. Right. Right. But once you get on that cruise terminal. That's where everything kind of starts. Yes. Yeah. Right. So why do they need theming on these vehicles? Well, okay. They need theming on the vehicle because essentially that vehicle... Interior. Yeah. I was thinking exterior. I don't know why they, they wouldn't need exterior theming. No, no, no. Right. It could be minimal because they'll like, never see I it. I was like, I want to see exterior theming. I want to see this fucking shit. Right. I want to see this house. You, you won't. I would love to, you but it, it just doesn't right. make sense. What's going to happen is it's it's essentially going to be like a loading dock at your local Walmart. You That... that, sh- that transport is going to back up to the uh, to the dock you're going to get on that bus and you're never going to see the outside of it and and if you look at this building probably from uh, Google Earth it's just going to be a giant rectangle a with block. no windows yeah of course yeah, pretty much because it, everything is going to be screens it's, it's going to be a concrete building and they're going to put plants around it trees around it so no one can see it no it's going to be no see them green yep and no, I don't think it'll be no CM Green. I think they're going to be smarter about it. Than no, that. no, but they'll 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 essentially screen it off from the rest of the world. Or I mean, there's nothing saying that you won't hop on like an internal monorail that's going to take you to this building either. We don't know what how this is all set up just yet. No. So I mean, it can take you to a building where there's one shuttle. Some other cool things about this is that it's a lot like a cruise where you're not going to have people constantly coming and going. Mm-hmm. You're going right. to... The same group all goes in at the same time. The same group all leaves at the same time. Yeah. So I'm kind of... I'm really... First of all, I'm really curious from like an operation standpoint how this is all going to work. But it's fucking Star Wars. And right. I, if you were going to give me a lightsaber that I can use to fucking practice the Force... Right. Fuck That's yes, sign I'm, me I'm up. I'm excited about because they, they're <laughs> touting training simulation with the lightsabers and I'm all for that. Right. So uh, now, so one of the shoot hidden some rooms, laser beams at me, I want to deflect them with my lightsaber. Hidden rooms. One okay, of, this is a nerd's role playing <laughs> dream. Yes. So one of the activities on the Halcyon will include lightsaber training where you may discover your own connection with the force. Guests will be able to learn the ins and outs of how to operate and how to operate a lightsaber, how to navigate the ship. Every window, including the cabins in the Halcyon, will have a view of the galaxy. So you'll find hidden spaces within the ship. You'll find different adventures within the ship. Uh, it looks. Uh, oh, I'm man. not. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to have to do this at some point. I'm going to bite the bullet, save up for it. And do it. Now, did they did they mention is it going to be? I mean, is it going to be like a cruise where there is dining aboard yes. the ship? Yes. Dining, dining is, is included, the and ship. your voyage to Batu is included. Yes. Yeah, so you you'll have one uh, spaceport day where you you your uh, essentially your ship will uh, enter orbit. You will then leave the ship, and you will fly down to Batu, and that's where again we talk about these these transport vehicles with. Uh, what what look to be interior uh, windows, or I you know put in air quotes windows, mm-hmm. that will that will take you from the the ship the Halcyon down to Batu and Galaxy's Edge, and you'll stay in Galaxy's Edge because you'll have things to do there. You'll have activities there. You'll have like shore well, excursions. That, that's yeah. that's the thing that well, it's not only that you could have a mission to do mm-hmm. in Batu. Right. Like you will get missions sent to your right. cabin or whatever they're calling the rooms or pods, and that kind of makes me crazy, like really excited. I really enjoy all the interactive features when I go to Disney, and like the pirate adventures that they have that not everybody does, and like all the puzzles that they have. I enjoy that kind of thing. So for for a seasoned Disney person who happens to be this big of a nerd like I am, I'm down for all this shit. Oh, of course. Knowing Adam and myself, we're going to get the fucking costumes. We're going to fully immerse ourselves in this dream you know that and that's something they didn't talk about because early news was that you were going to get costuming to go no, along you with this buy oh okay. so you can buy it <laughs> so okay. you can get it you can buy so it originally they said that it would be included with your your price but no i don't think they ever said that i think they did i think you're right but at the same token it, I, I don't care well i think it'll be simple costumes and then you can upgrade later on yeah probably because they want you but they mean, don't want you in your just look they don't want you to come there in your tennessee falls t-shirt 
I mean, you, but you you have an option of flying of flying the ship at one. You can go up and visit the bridge yeah. and attempt to fly this ship. They just announced so much, and I'm like, there's an. This might be a thing that I might have to do more than once, just because hmm. I'll have to play evil <laughs> once, and I'll have to play good once, and I'll have to be the spy and this once. This is where you selling know? the kidney comes in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm that kind of crazy person. Now, officially... Tim, just go steal a kidney <laughs> and resell it. I'm going to have to steal the kidney and all the wads, because... <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, you know what? Maybe you can, maybe you can work out a trade. Could, you yeah. can collect the wad, it's but it's going to cost you a kidney. But, but I mean, if you've ever play, played a video game where your decisions matter, Fable? I mean, the only one I can not so much Fable, but like Dying Light. Oh, I never Knife's the old Second Republic. Son, Second Son on PlayStation. Cold Oregon Core. Trail. Yeah, Oregon Trail. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but like you can play the game totally evil or totally good, and you have two totally separate right. endings. And, and it's just, that's the kind of thing I like. I like where going someplace the where there's a different story every time. Immersiveness of what you do in Batu determines everything. So the people on the Halcyon... Well, th- in this situation, will be before you even get to Batu, things have been determined for you. Right, but it's all going to interact, and the people on, on Batu are going to know what's going on w- with you on the ship, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. It's going to be totally immersive okay. and... It's gonna make you feel like you're. I mean, we saw we saw a commercial today. This little eight year old girl, when she was responding to this, she's like, "I waited my whole life for this." I'm like, "Girl, no, I'm 45. <laughs> I waited my whole life for this." Now, is it? Do you think those shore excursions that you do from the Halcyon is that going to be like a certain group of guests? do that during the day and there's like another shift of guests that do that of an evening or will it be that entire resort un- opens up into bad two at the same time and you got Karen who just showed up from uh, you know Muppet from Land. a cheer competition with her kids like what the fuck just happened with all these people showing up at once you know I don't think Karen would care I th- I yeah well I, th- I think it's going to be in groups I know what Mike is saying I think it's going to be in groups I think you're right I if think it, even if it isn't it's going to be probably a, I don't they'll, they'll have they'll what they'll have is they'll probably have like a couple hour missions at a time where right. they send people down in like two hour segments and then you go into Batu and then you guys stay here and your debarkation time is this time and, right because you're going to also have to remember they're going to have traffic in Batu from the actual park right. itself. Yeah, and then well, from the ship. And again, I think they'll include but I fast don't passes. I think this is stuff. just you'll probably have an express pass or fast pass or whatever yeah. it's going to be called for one uh, for one ride through. Uh, probably. I mean, at this price, I bet. But, you I would say two. probably both probably of them. Both. For, but th- this for a grand, for, give me for both. each one. Yeah. For each one, but I'm also thinking that they're going to be smart enough that they're going to separate those missions that not not yes. this whole group of people is going to one spot no, no, at the no, whole time definitely. anyway. So everybody's going to have something different to do depending on what your path is. And I'm sure like, there'll be like side missions of, of uh, aside from the two e-ticket attractions they're going to be in by two, there's going to be side stuff exactly. to do from the at least from the ship. I don't know if they're going to do it for like regular park guests as well, but at least from the ship you can have other stuff to do. You can't tell me there are not going to be staged right. people throughout that oh, whole no, no, no. It's definitely Five missions yes. and sabotage right. missions. Yeah. And yeah, there are going to be a whole, a whole slew of things I think they're going to do. Again, sign my Dungeons and Dragons loving, epic role playing, LARPing. The LARPing oh, yeah. ass up for this. I've done all those things at one point or another in my life. Um, it sounds, I mean, if they make it. Where if you want it to be, it could be like an intergalactic amazing race. Mm-hmm. Yes, it can. I think what they're saying is it can be as immersive or not as you want it to be. No, I, I I'm gonna, from what this sounds like to me, this is extremely. Oh, immersive. I want it to be. 100%. Do not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna pay the money to not have that. Immersive. I want to feel like I mean, Darth Vader is point? my daddy. <laughs> Luke. I'm well. uncomfortable by all this. His hand's not metal. <laughs> or robotic. <laughs> uh, what, what we know of this so far is it's essentially going to be, like Mikey said, a giant rectangle. Um, but there will be 34, 34 cabins per floor, three floors, so about 100, 109, 110 cabins. Oh, smaller than I thought. It, it's not going to no. be very big. It's, it's going to be very exclusive. Um, but you are definitely going to know your neighbor. 
but at the same token, not everybody's gonna. This isn't right. a, this an is experience that not everybody's gonna yeah. want to have. That not everybody's gonna want to set aside two days of their Disney trip to. Yes, this. I will. And and um. not not to mention the <laughs> fact that you're going to have to uh, essentially split stay, and not a lot of people have done split stays, and it's not easy to do a split stay. Oh yeah, it it's not that difficult. It, it's not it's not that difficult, but it's not easy. Um, it's really not that I. We've done it on more than one occasion. It's not horrific. I know. Oh, no, not issue. horrific, but it's not the easiest thing in the world. You do lose time. Well, when you think about, but you're not going to lose time on this one. Is if you start your trip off with the this at your beginning, mm -hmm. which is kind of what I would think of doing, is do this first. Yeah. Then, get your bags over to your hotel. It's like your arrival day at Disney right. World at that point because you just came back from Batu. Yeah, that that would work. Um, now think about it this way: um, Caribbean Beach has two thousand rooms. Disney's Contemporary has six hundred rooms. This is going to be very small. I'm fine with that. Well, i I don't think it. I don't think it's going to be super duper like that small because they have got all the stuff that happens inside. Oh no, that no, no, no! It, not like ship. small as in like it's going to be tight and cramped. It's going to be small. It's going as to like, be quaint. It's going to be intimate. But you're supposed to get to know again on a cruise ship. You constantly run into people. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, it, you're constantly talking to people. You're not, Mikey. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, like the lady who poured the drink in her shoe on that mm -hmm. that like first night. Yes, the Karen who lives just across. Yeah, the Karen who lives across the state from me but, here in but Arkansas. You, but but you learn people you get to say hello to the same people it's a, a cruising itself as an in, on a disney ship anyways a little bit more intimate than some of your other ships you're supposed to tell them bright suns oh yeah yeah that's that's the greeting for batu is bright suns bright suns i don't know what that means well, what two of them if you're on tatooine the my Headlights. propellers <laughs> my propellers bright propellers bright propellers i, don't know. I, 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 I watched some videos on well those are some headlights uh, i watched some videos on batu this weekend you ass. We seemed, haven't watched anything. <laughs> it seems really we weird. I haven't watched anything. I refuse to. It seems really weird. These people are saying bright suns, bright suns. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, yeah moving on. Eh, eh, moving eh, on eh, next, eh, Scott. Eh. I have avoided spoilers this whole time. You're not ruining this for me. Thank you. Guys you. Are nerds. Scott, you want you want to talk about <laughs> eating there? <laughs> uh, eating at the Halcyon? No. Oh, there will be a restaurant. That's fine. There then. will be a restaurant on property. I'm sure there'll be a, sure, a restaurant yeah. and a bar because be, they did show a picture of some sort of lounge. There's going to be uh, areas called the uh, arrival facility, two back of house places, the shuttle, and then the cabins and dining. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the admin facility, which I think is the um, is, is essentially going to be like the uh, the guest experience stuff. That's where you're going to have like the uh, uh, the things to do. I don't care. Here's my money. Um, Take sure. it all. I'm sure. Here's my wads. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bag full of wads. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, you know what? Let's stay in Hollywood Studios. Uh, more announcements about Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Uh, now, this one I, I got to be. It's coming. I got to be excited yeah. for because one of the coolest things about this is not only did they show the exterior for the new uh, Grauman's they Chinese Theater. The vehicle. They showed the ride vehicle, which reminds me of. Um, the new Mickey Mouse cartoon, Nature's Wonderland, it looks like that same train. Yeah. Similar, yeah. But I don't know if they're, if the exterior is for Hollywood Studios, because I don't think they're changing the exterior for Hollywood Studios. No, no, no. It, the exterior is going, to be, the... is going to be that. When you get inside, yeah. now, as you go through the queue, it, it very, very, this is a cool nod, very similar to what they did at Great Movie Ride, is they're going to have essentially a prop museum done by the uh, Disney H Hysterical Society or the Toontown Hysterical, Hys Hysterical Society yes hmm. the play on the pun historical yeah. oh yeah no yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. The, the, all I'm thinking hey, is hysterical like screaming raving this people is, this is not me this is well, Bob doing this laughing hysterical crying um, hysterical laughing so you'll you'll walk hysterical. through this, this exhibit kind of like what they had with uh, the great movie ride and there'll be props from the old Disney Silly Symphony. So they'll have like the bandstand costume that Mickey wore or the the vine from Jack and the or from Mickey and the Beanstalk. Hmm. So this sounds rather familiar. Can I say Muppets? You did. When you when you walk in and you have all the props and mm. the doors yeah, and you're walking like, behind. More like it. a museum and not just a warehouse full of stuff. 
now are these props going to be Authentic. tangible, real world, yes. three dimensional, yes. or are they going to play up the two D aspect of the entire thing and say, "Here's the prop of his clothes," and it's just no, no, no. They're going to create three D like that you can put on the <laughs> yeah, shoulders. <right. laughs> no, there's going to be three D props. <clears throat> they're going to build props that mimic the uh, the old cartoons. Hmm. And as you w- make your way into the theater or through the theater, you're actually going to get into a little kind of little bit of Toontown where the El Capitoon Theater is located. I thought that was the name of the whole facade. No, no, no. The facade is still the Chinese theater. Okay. So you'll find the attraction at the El Capitoon Theater where Mickey and Minnie's new short, Perfect Picnic, is about to premiere. And, uh... Reminiscent of the magic guest experience at the legendary Al Capitan Theater in Hollywood, you'll experience a special exhibit uh, created by the Toontown Hysterical Society featuring costumes and props from around the Toon world. And then you'll enter the cartoon world of Mickey and Minnie, and Goofy's going to be your engineer. And I hope it's not Crackhead Goofy. It's going to be Crackhead Goofy. It's going to be Crackhead Goofy. As you embark on the train ride of a lifetime. So you'll go through the the perfect picnic. Something will go wrong. There'll be a tornado, a la silly symphonies. Um, it'll it, it it's gonna be a. I think it's gonna be a fun ride. It's gonna be a nice addition to Hollywood Studios. But and what type of ride system is this? I think it's gonna be a trackless. But what type of ride vehicle is train. it? Train with a uh, train. I don't understand the logic now. It's a trackless train. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't know if it's going to be... Is it going to be trackless? I don't don't even know if they announced that Well, it's going to be similar to the ride system that's on... uh, That they had at Hollywood Studios. It was magnetic-based. Wait. Had what ride system at Hollywood Studios? The old... Great movie. movie The old K movie ride. Yeah. Right, but that wasn't really trackless. There was no track to it. Because the mag... I thought there was. No, it was an open floor. there was no track. This is probably going to be a once in a while ride. I don't think it's going to be a. I got to go to see it every trip. I think you do it. I think uh, you do it once a trip, maybe. I'll see what yeah. it looks like. I'll see what the the lines look like. I'll have yeah. to experience it. There's not. A, I don't know enough about it yet. I'm not. Based gonna on what I've seen of it, if it's under it's thirty minutes, so cute. I'll do it. Thirty minute wait. Or I'll less. see. I'll have yeah. to try it. So this is slated to open up at Walt Disney World Resort in 2020, and then they're making a Disneyland version of it in 2022. I mean, they have to have pretty good faith in this ride if they're already moving it, it yeah. and copying it. Now, they didn't say where they're putting it in Disneyland. That's the weird thing. Probably DCA. No. It's going... It, I think it's going to go... It doesn't make sense in DCA. Yeah, they didn't They didn't say where yet, but we'll have to see. room in Disneyland. I know. I mean, maybe, maybe gadgets. No, that's too small. Gadgets go coaster is tiny. What is it called? The um, my, what is that? The unless they do some Roger Rabbit's Toontown might go. Yeah, away. maybe they do that could. Toontown. That could. Dude, people are gonna fight oh, to keep that. Th- that's a well, great. People fight to now. keep everything now. That's a great that's attraction. Not, that's fun. Know, uh, that I was love, that was actually a. I love that. Ride. That was a joke about recent events, but. Fair enough. Y'all took it seriously. <laughs> but people will. I mean, and unfortunately, you know how this works. <laughs> I mean, looking at the map of Disneyland, I just... I mean, I it, there's, going there's, away. There's, too much, there's too much behind Disneyland that it would have to go away. Like, there's too many cast member buildings, admin buildings behind Toontown. Well, they already broke the berm for Galaxy's Edge, so... Uh, don't forget, they have all that property by... Um, yeah, didn't they just what is it called that the they street? closed? Well, no, because the the five is there. The five backs up to Toontown. Right, but the I mean, it might not go in Toontown, but don't forget they closed all those stores and stuff all along downtown Disney. Yeah, but that's behind uh, Pirates, though. I, just, I this is going to be tough for them to do. They'll figure it. Out. Uh, they have a point. Well, you know what? If they've already announced, you know what they that, could do? They bought all those. They bought they bought all that land where those hotels currently. They could uh, tear down some of the cast and corporate stuff behind Toontown because there's there's a good chunk of land that's all casting center, Disney, uh, Team Disney stuff that they could take and move that away from uh, away from there and put it uh, you know across Disneyland Drive or over across the the Five Freeway. Plenty they could do. 
but we'll see where this one goes. There's not a lot of room because, as uh, as I said, Gadget Go Coaster are small, and uh, Galaxy's Edge butts up right next to Toontown. Epcot. Let's talk about Epcot. Let's blow our wad in Epcot. Yeah. Disney has decided to uh, fully, finally fully announce almost all, I would say almost all the stuff, but I, cause I don't think they can do much more physically. But pretty much um, everything they're planning to do over over the next two years at Epcot. No. no. Nope. There's certain stuff that they, if they're doing all this, there's certain stuff they can't leave the way it is, and they haven't announced anything what yep. they're doing with it. Are you talking about Figment? Yep. <laughs> It doesn't even make sense into the way they separated Future well, let's, World. Well, let's start with that. We'll start with the new, the new lands that have now separated Future World. Um, Disney has announced a retheming of Future World altogether. So, in uh, while we have World Showcase... and Well, the Future na- World name pretty much goes away yes. now when you think about it. It's now it. four different neighborhoods. Yes, it's now America. World Showcase. But in the front of the park, you have... Essentially, World Celebration, which is a company... The center. Yeah, the center of the park, up to what looks like the Odyssey restaurant on the, the left-hand side. And does that go to where Figment is? No. no. Figment is now part of nature. Yes, which makes World no I sense. Don't, I don't know, because if you, look at the, if you look at the map that's in blue, the bathrooms are kind of the tail end of the nature section, the Figment bathrooms. Well, the Figment bathrooms are in front of Figment. No, Figment no, bathrooms are in back. So Di- Figment is now part of World Celebration instead of the Imagination Pavilion. So essentially this 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 does sound like Imagination Pavilion is going away as we know it. I don't know. I know they didn't announce they, they, they anything just, of that pavilion. Quick, it just like the whole pavilion did not exist and yep. they're not touching it and it's just weird. Yep. Um, so off to the right will be uh, World Nature. So this will accompany the old, the, you know, the old Land Pavilion and the old Disney uh, Seas Pavilion. When you say old, I think you mean old. current. Well, no, yeah. it's old now. Technically, this old. is the I mean, new. Well, they're yeah, not but, changing but, it, but there's, it, it's still there. It's and still yeah, there. They're but, not well, they're really... adding. They're adding the Planet Earth movie. Yeah. So this will all now be part well, of Disney I mean, Nature or World Nature. Um, you'll have the, uh, the the seas pavilion, the land pavilion, which we'll, we've already talked about in our home improvement episode, uh, episode ninety four, um, where where they're going to have a new nature film uh, at at Disney's land pavilion. Soren's obviously going to stay. Uh, Living with the land has not been announced for any changes. Uh, that's going to stay. So, kind of like this, kind of like the new nature pavilion. Uh, but it will also include a new Moana-themed um, attraction. Splash, splash pad. Attraction, Tim. They called it an what attraction. What a feature. <laughs> splash pad. What a feature. I, I'm, we'll touch on this later. <laughs> no, we'll touch on it now. Disney uses the word, no. They like to throw that word attraction around. They do. And a lot of people think that means ride. Right. But it could literally mean an inner a water fountain a, a meet and that greet. interacts with yeah. you, and that's an now, attraction because they attach an IP to it. There's going to be some sounds. I mean, it's 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 yes, it's more than just a water fountain. Well, but, no, supposed to teach you I mean, about the water cycle. And this is, I mean, it's it's a little more in depth than a water fountain. I I can't say that they call a water fountain an attraction. This, with yeah, theming. this is going to be more... Because I don't think they call... What's its name? The water feature in... The um... well, Fountain of Nations is not an attraction. It's just no. the Fountain of Nations. Yeah. Do you think this requires uh, tapping your magic band to get into? No. No. It's a walkthrough. It's a walkthrough. Then but does well, that I mean, make a, it there has not to an be attraction? A, if there has to be a capacity limit for it. And Maharaja Jungle Trek is an attraction. Yeah. And you don't both the jung- your- both the jungle yeah. tracks and the gorilla yeah gorilla falls you don't have to tap your magic yeah. band again so but do you queue up for it no, no. you just walk, you right just walk in well I mean that's what I mean this do you think you would queue up or would you oh. just, no, just when it first through. opens There'll I guarantee you're gonna oh, yeah. have to yeah. queue yeah. up well so in addition because there's gonna be a capa- capacity be new and everybody's gonna want to see it I just think at what point do we stop calling something attraction and just start calling it an a feature well because this is it's a little bit more than just a feature. Like the think about this as like an updated portion of 
Interventions. Yeah. Interventions was an attraction, but... I mean, you didn't need to tap a magic band. You didn't need to queue up. It just... You walk in, you look around, and it taught you something. This is supposed to teach you the life cycle of water. You know, from rain to evaporation and all this kind of... Kind of what the old Living Seas used to teach you. Instead of... Uh, Let's name the zones of the ocean floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this looks like uh, essentially it will be. I love Mr. Ray. It will be a uh, uh, kind of a a new addition to the neighborhood. It looks like it's going to open up where um, just to the right of Spaceship Earth where Interventions used to be. Yeah. So not far off. uh, The poster of this looks really cool. Totally old school Epcot. Well, I'm interested about it. When they first announced it, they said it was going to replace... It's replacing the dancing fountains of the Imagination Pavilion. Which leads me to believe they're re, either they're redoing the whole Imagination Pavilion, which they haven't announced yet. Maybe that's their phase two. Of Epcot. I mean, it looks like it's supposed no, to go where di- that lake is. Where the kid went swimming? Yes. Where the, uh, where the upside down fountain... Yes. Where the... Upside just, down. Yeah, waterfall. just in front of the Imagination Buffet. Which that's just in front of the Imagination Buffet. That's the Epcot swim team training yes. facility. Actually, by the way. Correct. actually, no. Uh, if I'm looking at the art, uh, this is going Epcot to be. Olympics. This is essentially going to be uh, on the opposite side of uh, of Mouse Gears. So if you go directly over from Mouse Gears, this is basically going to be where. Oh no. This is, is yeah. this is going to replace my favorite pond that looks into Spaceship Earth and you take those awesome photos where it reflects Spaceship Earth. Oh, that's a bummer. That's a real bummer. So this is going to be an open air type of experience. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It, so if, if think of yeah. it this way, as you're walking think towards of, think the of land. Walking through the paths in Pandora. With the with the penis plant, and you're yeah. just walking through. It's gonna be like right. That. No, I mean I, I get so, that. It's just so as you're walking, it's an experience. It, it's yeah. gonna be hot. As you're walking through, um, well, there's water. And they're so adding more shade. Get, get they're adding more shade to Epcot. Lots more shade. Bob Chapek said mm-hmm. lots more shade. Mm-hmm. So as you're walking through the old breezeway between um, Interventions Plaza and the land, off to the right of that is that like reflection pond that just, it, it's basically it just sits there. It's a reflection pond. Uh, that's where this is going to go. It, that that kind of bums me out because that's one of my favorite photo spots in all of Disney World. You can still take photos I'm there. I'm sure I can, but it's not going to have the same effect on... Of a sprinkler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. Well, look, it, it does look cool. I'm excited for it. I'm not. I'm excited for it. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm laying it out there right now. I think they could have done more for the film Moana yeah. than... Than this. Well, of course. This was. Now, let's just be happy that we're getting anything, though, at this point. I mean, when you think well, about how old the movie is, and the movies that are coming out okay. now. Well, are, aren't they making a, a second one? They got to no. make a second one. They made a first one. You know Disney. No. They're not or they're going to just go Moana. right to live oh, action. Actually. Moana was not big enough for them. If it's going to be, it's going to be a direct to video, like, sequel. Direct, kind no, of thing direct like to Disney to. Plus. Yeah. There you go. Same shit. I don't do videos that much anymore. Don't do videos anymore. Um, so oh, let's let's stick over in the uh, the right side there, and in, in well, no, technically this is Disney Celebration. So over at Disney Celebration or World Celebration, I should say, is a brand new three level Festival Center Pavilion. So essentially, there's going to be a ground floor where there'll be some interactivity. Uh, there's going to be a wishing tree, apparently, or is that upstairs? That's on the third level. Because yeah, that's where the park is. Yeah. The third level is the park. And then you walk up into the middle level, which is going to encompass a bar lounge restaurant thing. They haven't really kind of pinned that no, down. This, no, that it's going to be, be the exhibition center. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's where all your, like, all the events are going to happen. Like where no longer in Wonders of Life Pavilion, they'll move right. like all the dem- demos, demos. and The Chew is probably going to go there. Gotcha. And- so they'll have like a full studio that they're not don't have to block up half of Epcot mm-hmm. for anymore. And then the last level, the third level, is going to have uh, trees, vegetation, almost a garden area on top, uh, and that is going to be a perfect viewing spot for the new uh, nighttime spectacular. And I guarantee you're going to have to get reservations. For oh, that. you bet you. You're going to have to pay a premium for There'll that. There'll be some kind of a dessert party, dessert party, yeah. liquor party, bourbon party. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. 
Uh, looks really cool. I mean, if this... I, well, I actually... What I see happening is... What is a cult going there? The um, party that Tim and I went to. Party for the census? Party for the census yeah. going there. Yeah, I can see that. Well, I think they're... Well, that that's because they're going to need the room from Party for the Census for something new coming to, to Disney World. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's stick in World Celebration. Uh, so, with the... Oh, with the uh, on the heels of our our episode on Spaceship Earth, <laughs> lo and behold, a new narrator and new scenes are coming to Spaceship Earth. Adam no likey. Sounds I can weird. see that. Uh, yeah, right. it, it sounds yeah. like they're taking and and just it, you know if, if we thought that the, the the new verbiage they put in there um, in this most recent script update was was really dumbing down what was going on then this just makes it sound I, I don't know okay. watching when they announced this I thought the light spray that was supposed to be your guide was Tinkerbell <laughs> right I, I was just thinking that it's like when they updated Peter Pan in California with the Tinkerbell fairy dust all over the whole ride this is what I thought I was like really You're just gonna spray some light on a wall and say here's your guide yeah, now the, the theme of the attraction is less on technology because now Siemens is not sponsoring it. It's more about storytelling, uh, storytelling and the experience of humans to humans. Um, I don't... How do you guess, do that but not make it about technology? Right. Because the whole thing is about science, learning, technology, and where we've come. Well, here's, and how well, technology I mean, shapes our lives. The portion, you can kind of get away with theater and all like... Oh, you okay. can get away with most of it. Because essentially a lot of those, a lot of no, those scenes are you from... you a certain part. But a lot of those scenes you, are from the once original you get past, Once you get past Rome, it, yeah. it becomes out of storytelling and into yeah, technology. I mean, it, you can't, it does. I think it's, unless they change all those scenes. I think I don't think Foxy Brown to. stays on. Uh, they <laughs> might be. <laughs> I got. I got to make a so, shirt. So was it? So was it not <laughs> Bill Gates, not Steve Jobs, yes, not Wozni, not or Wozni. Wozniak. I said Wozni. <laughs> Wozniak. <laughs> and, and that uh, Gate, Gates of Wozni Jobs. And the other thing is, <laughs> what are they going to do with the planet, the end planetarium scene? When you're looking at Spaceship Earth. I, I don't know. Oh, I think... I'm well, if it's supposed to unite they, us globally, they'll they'll work that into it. Somehow. Yeah, they'll work Well, they only it. initially announced that that was going to get an updated projector and you're going to see more stars, and that was only they announced. And they didn't announce anything yeah, but, more about that scene last weekend, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned. So I'm, I'm very, very, very They're going very to fuck concerned. up my favorite ride... Well, my second favorite ride I've got. Yeah. Um, but... Aside from the Grand Fiesta tour, but the yes. one thing that does that does <laughs> interest me in uh, well, I was gonna say uh, <laughs> Forever China, or whatever, is, whatever that movie is. <laughs> forever China, China forever. Well, everything everything now is being, is naming forever everything. Like the new, well, the temporary Illumination replacement is Forever Epcot. Epcot then, Forever, yeah. This for like Forever France. Yeah, but we're now we're we're it's Frozen Ever After. Place. Let's get. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's ring this in a little bit. Now, uh, now one of the one of the cool things about uh, World Celebration is that they are going to be dedicating a new statue to uh, Walt Disney. Yeah, I love this in Dreamers Square. Yeah, I love, I love this, this idea, idea so, so much. much. As you exit exit Spaceship Earth, you'll discover a breathtaking new uh, new view of World Showcase. So you won't have. Uh, you won't have the same Interventions Plaza, but Dreamers Point will celebrate a new statute celebrating the legacy of uh, the legacy of the original Dreamer, Walt Disney. So it looks it looks pretty cool. I really love this. I teared up when I saw yeah, that. Too. Not gonna lie, I really appreciate that they're getting back to Walt. The pose they put him in. Yeah, sitting on the on the steps. Yeah, that that screams photo op. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and it'll be behind a fence so you can't Probably. get too close to it without a photo pass photographer. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they'll definitely have a photo pass photographer there. And I uh, I welcome that. This is this is one thing I, I probably the one thing in Epcot, well, the second thing in Epcot that I'm most excited for. And it's as simple as a statue. Mm, no. There's a, a lot, lot of right now that I'm God. really excited for. Uh, this is simple but effective. Correct. I agree with you. Now on that. the other, it's low maintenance. The other thing that uh, was not really announced but shown in the concept art is they're bringing back that original 
Epcot uh, entrance fountain with the the pillars that go up in uh, the air. Uh, updated version of yes, the original. Yes, updated one. version. Because yes. <laughs> I even pointed that out to Tim. Like, is that the old that one? looks like the old one. And uh, Bob Chepik said it's, it's an, an updated yeah. version of the old one. Really it's cool. Because it looks like there's a very powerful light. Yeah. That's oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be lit up at night. Mm-hmm. They're going to fight for uh, Islands of Adventure for Spotlight. Yeah. Exactly. Um, right. Now, moving over to the the third land. What is that called? Disney or er, World World Discovery. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, World Discovery. Uh, we are getting the 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 Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, and this will be the first ever reverse launch into space. So you're launching backwards from the start. Yeah. And you'll I am. You'll be in four seat. I'm excited for that. Uh, four person seat mm-hmm. rides. And you are going to follow the uh, the ship as you go through space. Uh, looks really cool. I like the the, the queue with the planetarium. Yeah, no, the galaxarium they called it. Yes. Sorry, galaxarium. Galaxarium. That looks cool. So that looked really interesting. That looks really awesome. Also, also in uh, World Discovery is the Play Pavilion. We we talked about this on episode 104. Uh, this will invite guests to discover a city bursting with games, activities, and experiences that will connect them with the family, friends, and forever favorite Disney characters. Yes, forever is a big word that they're using a lot this year. Uh, it looks cool. It's a long time. There's going to be a water balloon fight with Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Looks like fun. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be virtual mm-hmm. or not. I think it's going to happen. So I'm kind of concerned about oh, that. Oh, it's totally going to be virtual and you know it. Yeah, then that's not going to be that fun. <laughs> I want to really chuck water balloons yeah. at kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you forgot about Edna Mode. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yes, Edna Mode will be there. She'll have her... They actually listened to... They took cues from Adam's ride. Yep, they'll Edna have Mode's the... fashion faux pas. Uh-huh. Edna Mode's fashion faux pas will open up and, uh, you know, Adam, you're two for two. <laughs> well, Go me! He's, he's two for more than two. We've all put out several True. ideas for all kinds of stuff, so he's... They listen to Adam though. He I'm wins. Hey, he, he wins poll. He wins poll. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever position that puts him in. <laughs> Any position I can get it. How about them? Apple? <laughs> may, 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 he, may, may he collect the wads? <laughs> yeah. Hey, if that's what it takes to get me on the Star Wars hotel, I'm gonna do what I got to do. Ain't no shame in my game. No shame. <laughs> no, no shame wiping up a poll wad. <laughs> That'll open up, I think they said later in 2020. So. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Space 220 is uh, officially announced. Uh, this is the, the space restaurant over between um, uh, Mission Space and uh, Test Track. It's going to be attached to Mission Space. Yes, attached to Mission Space. Uh, it looks, like I said, we've seen the concept art. The actual, like, visual... Uh, animation that they showed for this where things are flying above the ceiling and, uh, above you. I love this, man. And you enter the restaurant through an elevator that's going to take you 220 miles I up yes. in space. Just really cool. cool. Very cool. I'm very excited for this one. We may or may not Winter. be trying to get reservations for it. For... It... Well, it depends on when the reservations actually open because yeah. winter lasts all the way through yeah. February. Yeah. Right. In Disney speak, so, so, so this um, is wi- probably the beginning of March. Winter of 2019, yeah. uh, that could be anywhere from, generally it's December something, December 5 is usually their winter time, technically. No, yeah, probably late December, but I mean, I'm hoping we're going for wine, we're going for Dopey. Oh, it'll be open yeah, by then. we're stupid. It'll be open by then. It's, it's, well, it's only the second week of January. Yeah, I think it'll be open by then. So, but even the last time we were there, they had the we'll building up and everything. Yeah. Right, so... In May, Hopefully. in May, they were starting to close off the outside walls, the uh, the concrete walls that will house the uh, the viewing equipment. So this one, this one looks good. I I'm definitely excited to eat there. I'm sure it'll be very fusion, very Asian fusion. I have no idea what the food. I don't they're think so because out. it's by the Patina Group, isn't it? It's by yeah, Patina Group's putting it out. So it's probably mostly Italian. so it's Italian. Because they yeah, do Via Napoli, they do, they do Maria and Enzo's. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely eating there then. I love Patina Group. I love all the restaurants at Disney. 
Um, let's see. Okay. Scroll yeah, back. The no, because there's the, uh, well, technically in World Celebration, but, uh, somewhat in, in Discovery. It's near, it's very near World Discovery. Uh, the Odyssey Restaurant is officially closing for good. Uh, it'll no longer be a, a, uh, event space, but it's going to highlight the Imagineering of Epcot. So it'll be a, a kind of an exhibition space towards, uh, Epcot's Imagineering. I like I like the idea for this. I really like this one. So it's going to be like One Man's Dream and... Yes. Obviously, yes. But it's going to have a nod to all the old pavilions. It's going to have stuff from, uh, stuff from you know, kind of the uh, old portfolio into the new one. So you'll, you'll have your... Tim, Adam, you'll still have your little purple dragon. For now. For now. I think his name's remembered. Well, no, he'll just be in a, a little. He'll be in a little horizons. museum. He's gonna be just requisited to being the theme to food and wine. Mm, pretty much. He's gonna be the food and wine mascot. And that's mm -hmm. gonna be it. He's the merch mascot. Yeah. And that saddens me. Yeah. And then eventually he won't, because then he'll be Duffy. Then he'll just be a figment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, a memory. Now, the, the last minor thing before we get into a uh, couple of the major things for Epcot. Uh, they did kind of announce the uh, the opening dates for La Creperie and uh, Ratatouille Adventure, uh, early 2020. So, <laughs> I love that. Early. It's not even a season. <laughs> March. I bet you that's March. That gives them from January to, like, May. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To get it done. Anytime before June. <laughs> we got until June, guys. Your 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 timeline's good. Again, uh, just more concept art. Uh, the crepery looks really good. Not gonna lie, I'm excited. So for now, that. You, that probably just does away with the crepery booth, then. Yeah, I would think so. So they're gonna probably may hopefully put something else there. Because now you'll actually have a restaurant, and then a new uh, China. Uh, two new films are being uh, introduced: a uh, new China film and a new uh, Canada film. New, all new filming, all new scenes, uh, new narration. So, and new seamless screens. Yep, that's going to be really cool. That's going to be really cool. Which I imagine that France is probably not far behind. Mm -hmm. No, no, a new film. No, well, France is getting well, their own thing. France is also getting the Beauty and the Beast sing along. So, is that going to go into the France theater? Uh, or is it they yeah. Building, are they building a whole new theater? No, no, it? that's going to go into the France theater, but it's also going to mix with. Oh, the right. Impressions yeah, of France. Yeah, this thing that they're going to disperse it. Yeah. I I don't know. Uh, I'm excited for a new Canada film. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Because, quite honestly, Martin Short's not that funny in that film. Well, who's the, who's going to be the new Canadian? In Canadian, that uh, film, in that film, Mikey. Don't don't hate me. Don't hate me. Put I like you. him in that film. Like everything, Dis he's given... Disney to work with. I mean, he all he can do is deliver the lines and be like himself. Hey, Pure Luck was way better. Nice to see both of these movies get some love. It's been a long time since either one of them have been touched. So are they putting any chairs into that Canada? They're pavilion? lean rails. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> my <laughs> wife still won't China. go to it. <laughs> I yeah. would imagine they're going to stay lean rails. They're <laughs> chairs <laughs> of your adventures. <laughs> yeah. They're also beds of your adventures. <laughs> oh, that's real adventurous. I may have fallen asleep on a lean rail in China. I'm just, I'm just saying. That's that's Cirque du Soleil level. Okay, yeah. Now, big announcements for Epcot. Um, let's see. How do we do this? Uh, a new theme song. Let's start with a new theme song. You guys heard it play. Look, for those that didn't hear it, I didn't. we'll play it right now. Okay.
It's nondescript. I don't remember. It, it. is. It's like a lot of gospel singing. Yeah. I. There I was didn't. singing. There was crying. There was chanting. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> if you think about some of the Epcot songs as their theme, promises I, way better. Tomorrow's Child way better. We are one way better. We are uh, one. Celebrate the future hand in hand. Ten billion times better. Mm. Stop it. I will say uh, the, the girl they got to compose the new song. P she's quite impressive. Pina. Yeah, I forgot her name, but she's she's done a bunch of. I have to hear it. Like high level classical music scores. I would have to hear it, like the actual, maybe not through a stream, through a stream like that. I kind of ghetto, kind of rigged it to actually see this thing. So it might sound better on a full on recording instead of the way I was streaming this show. So I, I'm going to hold judgment on I, it. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, it was, it was okay. It didn't move me. And again, maybe it'll move me after uh, Epcot Forever, whatever the nighttime show is. Well, Epcot Forever is temporary and then it's going to Harmony Us. Harmony Us. Don't I, I don't even get me oh, on that. Man. This is Harmony Us. You guys, so back when uh GTE was merging with someone else, I forgot the other company, and they came up with the name Verizon. It was panned by everyone. And this r r ranks right up there. Harmony Us in capital letters. Us. Like, if you look at it, it looks like Harmony U.S.? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. I, I was thinking, oh, God, it's, 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 a, it's a patriotic it's ego, thing. This is kind of weird. Nope. But no. Nope, it's Harmony Us. Yeah, and so this is going to be... <laughs> Harmony, no, Harmony U.S. U. Okay. <laughs> Harmony Granger? <laughs> I am sorry, Rogue no, Park. I, I don't go by you. I, I prefer the term we or they, so Harmony, Harmony They would work for me better. It's Harmony <laughs> <Thems. laughs> It's a Harmoniums. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, the new nighttime spectacular, uh, Epcot's Harmony Us, will debut following Epcot Forever in 2020. So, uh, limited time run for Epcot Forever, which we talked about on uh, on our Epcot Improvement episode. This is going to be a celebration of Disney music, like we said back then. It's going to have uh, water screens, fireworks of the lagoon. Uh, not much is changing with, I think, the fireworks rigs. Because they're still going to use those fount those uh, fireworks blast offs from each of the points of around World Showcase. It's going to be jet skis with kites. <laughs> I, it's supposed to be added. I think that was for I the, have no forever. idea where the jet skis come in, but good for them. Okay. It it does. <laughs> yeah. What do you do for the I want that job. jet ski around World Showcase? <laughs> No, no, no! They got, got a separate guy around the kites because he's got a steer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're probably they're oh, probably drunk. Damn, control. I want to do the kites. Um, <laughs> Just want to. <laughs> I can see me losing my balance. So, so yeah, this will, well, there goes this the will be a celebration of Disney music. A lot of it, it, it's it's basically a tale about how Disney music brings us us together. Us, harmony, us. Us. Yeah, fuck yes, that. Yes, and we lose. That's we the are the best one. song of Disney er, of Epcot. I cry after <laughs> that every time. Mikey, you don't have feelings. You're a ginger. Doesn't matter. Yeah, nope. Is that is that the part you of could, the? You uh, could find illumination. Yeah. <laughs> is that, no, no. I, I had a guy holding a flag led me right to it. <laughs> he was a flag he lady. Was cool. He was the flag lady. <laughs> Damn. Is that is that? That song you're talking about is at the part of Illuminations where you kind of take an ass. Shut your the fucking end. mouth. Okay. Ugh, Mikey. I thought we were too. Apparently not. I thought we were cool, Mikey. Nope. I guess we yeah, can't so be Yeah, so Harmonious. Harmonious. And, and, and just so you know, we'll be looking for a new one. Adam, we're always. <laughs> <laughs> Harmonious will debut in uh, 2020. Summer of 2020, they say. Um... 
custom built LED pan panels, massive floating set pieces, pyrotechnics, lights, moving fountains, lasers, and more. Well, I'm always excited and more. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I'm going to miss Illuminations. I really am. But we'll see. We'll have to oh, see. Oh, my. It's the best fireworks show on property. Well, we'll see. And that, I'm probably not going to hate it, but I'm not going to love it. I'll, I'll hope again, withholding Hold judgment until I see until, what they get. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to have more of an attachment to Epcot Forever, Epcot Forever than I yeah. am towards this harmonious. I don't know if we'll get to see it. Yes, we will. We'll be there in January. Yeah, you will. Yeah, it's it's running from uh, For, It starts October. October 1st and it will run through the summer. October to, to Literally not forever. Exactly. <laughs> the exact opposite of forever is about a six to eight month time frame. Yeah. <laughs> Epcot for now. Epcot no, for the actually time. we're going to call it Epcot better. placeholder. <laughs> yes. Epcot for the time being. Epcot temporary. Placeholder, the fireworks show. Yeah. Epcot, please hold. Yeah. All right. So, so the last thing that was announced at World Showcase, and this is the big one. Mary Poppins yes. is finally, yes. finally. Seventeen Cherry Tree Lane is coming mm -hmm. to the UK Pavilion. Got finally. overly excited when this happened. This, and then my stream cut out. <laughs> this is what what and this place needed. So uh, God help them if they use the animatronics from the Great Movie Ride because I will. Oh God, cut a bitch. I, I, oh, I, I, I didn't even think, think about that. Oh fuck, I will cut a bitch if they do that. <laughs> oh fuck, I, I highly doubt they will, but I'm assuming it's going to be all new an animatronics. Now, now. Essentially, they are going to build 17 Cherry Tree Lane, and you will walk through 17 Cherry Tree Lane. You'll see Admiral Boom's house. You'll see the Banks house. You'll see the park on the right. Uh, they've the the animations they had. They had kites flying. The cannons going off from Admiral Boom's house. By the by, God, if that goes out off on the hour every uh, eight noon, they're gonna have to do that. eight noon four and eight. I will, I will shit my pants. So this is a walkthrough? No, no, no. It's well, a full ride. So just, ride. Andrea, if you're listening, Scott's okay. going to need a diaper to walk through Epcot <laughs> from now on. <laughs> if anybody, this, this is a, if anybody knows a, me, a, 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 this is a ride. This, a this it's, is it's, my it's favorite a ride. movie. They just not. But we don't a moist experience. We don't know what it is. Like I, there's rumors that it's a dark sure ride. There's gonna be a Lin Manuel Miranda. I we don't know because why would no. Now he needs a diaper. <laughs> no, because w oh. they wouldn't have... I don't think they would. I don't bitch. think it's going to be Lynn. I think they're going back to the classic because they wouldn't have announced it with Step in Time. Yeah, no, I think... And they wouldn't have had stuff. Dick Van Dyke come up on stage to announce this. Well, yeah. he was he was part of the second movie. Not as no, iconic not as, well. as he was in the first one. And he also didn't if play If they do any... a blend of the two movies, I'd be okay with that. Because... I would want to see a cover. I knew that was, yeah. That's an yeah. amazing scene. That's my the most memorable scene for me. I love that scene. Yeah, two thirds of it. Shut it, Mikey. Don't hate on Lin Manuel Miranda. It didn't I love fit. that part. It didn't fucking fit the song. It didn't what? fit anywhere. Covers not the book. When he gets all hippy it hop does. in the middle at the, at the end of that okay, song, it didn't you, fit. You're going to hate me for this, and I hate myself for saying it more. But I have to stick with Scott on this because the rap that he does is actually a story in Mary Poppins. Yeah. Yep. And it's the That's whole funny. story. It's, so It's it, actually a story in the book Mary Poppins. All returns. the songs that they mention throughout that whole thing is a story of Mary Poppins. I think this is definitely going to be a blend of the two because the concept art features Jack the Lamplighter on the lamp um, right in front of Cherry Tree Lane. I think it's... Now... Again, you're going to actually walk into the Banks' house for the queue for this. So you're going to walk into the Banks' house, you're going to go through the Banks' house, and that's where you're going to get into the ride. It, again, I If am, I don't enter the ride through that fucking bathtub, then I don't want to go. Oh, oh that yeah. would be so awesome. Like a slide down down to the bat, down to the ride. Oh, yes. Which, which killed me was a practical effect. They actually slid down something, which blows my mind still. There was no CGI in that scene. No, no, it was a real... It, they built that on the second mm -hmm. floor, or on the, the second floor of it, and then slid down a actual slide. That was awesome. Yeah. 
I am I am so excited for this. I uh, I got really excited because this was the only true surprise announcement that truly got me excited besides the um the riding a um the one in California. Quinjet. This was the only surprise announcement for Disney World. There was yeah, nothing this, really announced this for one, Magic Kingdom. This one totally by surprise. We, we'd all talked about a dark ride or a Mary Poppins ride, and there's been rumors of it, but this was never really leaked. This one was kept under wraps pretty well. And there's Brazil for you. Yep. <laughs> I was just about to say, and how much did it cost? It cost twenty Brazilian dollars. Uh, but yeah, they, as, the, they, as the Amazon burns. Yeah. I am super excited for this. Uh, and now I, I'm assuming that this is going to take the place of the current Grosvenor Square area that's in the UK Pavilion. From what they said, they're building a whole new area. It, yeah, that's what I heard. They're building a whole new area. So then I guess you'll walk through there past, quote unquote, Hyde Park. Yes. And then and then go into where the the festival pavilion is, where Party for the Census was, the Millennium exactly. Village. Yeah. And then that okay. would be the new Cherry Tree Lane area. <sighs> Dude, I can't Which wait for this. Which makes perfect sense because there is stuff in the books that take place in Hyde Park. Yes, lots of so, it. So ev- everything kind of connects, and it makes a lot of sense when you truly think about it. Except for maybe the T tour. Still my favorite pavilion. This is the best. Hmm. Oh so wait, surprise face again. I think I'm gonna try to actually get into um, the Rose and Crown. This what? Time. You're gonna have to queue up for it. What? Yeah, for, Fuck it. F- for food and wine. Lo- uh, now a queue wine. for Rose and Crown. Or? Just during food and wine. Yeah, when are we going? Well, hey, we're going during food and wine. wine. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Mikey, you can make a reservation for dinner there because the dinner is actually really good. The food's good there. Probably not. I love the food there. The food is good. There. It's decent. I just said, can I just peek in and look? Oh, yep, and leave. It's only 50 feet apart. Still two different buildings. Actually, actually, if you walk into the Rosencrantz pub, you can look into the dining room. You can look in, but you can't go in. There's a, there's a. Well, the pub was where I wanted to go. There's a, a, a breezeway door. The pub's gonna have a queue. Yes, yes the, the pub. pub has they, a queue. they made a queue for it now. It's sort of like how it is at La Cava. Yeah, only in. I mean, do they have to be that British? Do they have to make a queue for the yes, pub. It's British. I know. Because we can be online. They, they queue up to go to the loo. That just for you, Brent, because you picked on me before, so and you know what I'm talking about. He's always, he's always picking on you. <laughs> <saying that. laughs> Don't get me started on the Steve Jobs debate again. What? It's okay. We're having, a deba- we're having our own debate that I decided we need to bring on the show, Brent and I. So. <laughs> um, all right. So, look, all of the news at D23, lots of stuff going on. Uh, it is a it is finally a good time for Walt Disney World. Oh yeah, you did a number on that thing. You did damage on that one. Well, I can't take it home with me. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not a half a bottle of tequila during a live session that I don't black out part of. So, <laughs> well, yes, but that was also your act, your your voiceover acting <laughs> debut. <is> true. <laughs> <laughs> Mustafa, <laughs> which is <laughs> Mustafa. Mustafa. say it again. <laughs> I will never see the light of another day. <laughs> I was just about to say so that. Drunk. So drunk. Um, so lots of <laughs> lots of stuff coming to uh, to Disney World. Very excited for all of the announcements. Um, good time to be in Disney World. Well, in two years. Excuse me. There's a really good time to be in Disney World next month. Why is that, Adam? Well, why do you think, Scott? We have a major shoot up coming up, don't we? No way! Yes way! No! This is a really bad acting, Scott. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Why am I a lawyer? Scott doesn't get to be on the next live read. (laughs) And you were gonna you were gonna be my Rapunzel, Scott. (laughs) You were gonna be my Rapunzel. I can still smolder for you. That's not Rapunzel. Rapunzel 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 See, this is why he can't do it. (laughs) That's that's Flynn Rider. That's another reason. And Scott doesn't get drunk enough. This is true. <laughs> well, I could. <laughs> one thing else that was quickly announced was the 50th anniversary was going to be celebrated in all four parks, not just Magic Kingdom. Which I and I love the emblem. Which makes sense. Yeah, the, the, the new emblem is the logo looks beautiful. Nice. The logo is stunning. There's gonna be a lot of merch purchases. And the, oh, there are, yeah. the rumor is it's 50. A lot of perch merchased. The rumor is it's 50 new things. For the 50th. 
Are they counting all the things that are opening up to the 50th? Probably. Oh, yeah. Some of them, but that's or, still not 50 or, from what they announced. are we getting 50 popcorn buckets? We're getting 50 popcorn <laughs> I was gonna buckets. going to be a bunch of snacks <laughs> no, and We're actually cupcakes. getting 10 popcorn buckets and 10 pins, so that's 20 things out of the way right away. And then 10, di- and coaster. 10, 10 different cupcakes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's gonna be there's gonna be a non alcoholic drink in a Magic Kingdom. Somewhere. Five new Dole Whip flavors. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, the Dole Whips have turned into Bloody Marys, yep. guys. What the freaking <laughs> hell? Bloody Marys. Yeah. Here's a Dole Whip. Let me put, let me let me, and let me you know go ahead and uh, put some fallopian tubes on. Oh, it's a tomato you. Whip. Oh, great! It's a hymen. Oh, what? Fuck <laughs> oh. Moving on. <laughs> Let's wrap this bitch up before it sinks even farther. Adam, we, we were talking about Big Summer Blowout. Yeah, it's coming a big up. Summer Blowout. Um. Your prom court has been announced at mm. this point. Mm-hmm. So vote privately. Vote only once. If you vote more than once, we will know. And we will delete both of your votes. Yes. Or all or of all, all of your votes if you vote more money. than two times. If you get a, you're not getting away with it, we figured out a way. We are tracking you. We know where you're voting from. Yeah, this is, this is in Chicago, folks. Yeah. yeah. Or Florida, for that matter, or with Florida. your dangling Chad. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh. No, we got we got Putin involved, so we know. <laughs> so the top two guy, the w- top one guy, the top one girl will be our your prom king and queen for BSB. Scott is going to be the only one with that information, and it will be announced. We'll try to get a live feed going, but can't promise. But it'll be announced the night of Sheeta prom, which will what? be Saturday night. If not, there'll be a video and they'll be posted. They got yeah. nothing else to do on that big screen at uh, Atlantic Dance Hall. They got no one else in there. So okay, have sure you heard, have you ever tried to use Disney Wi-Fi before? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adam, um, do you happen to have a a, a rundown of the court? Hey, I do. Uh, I can kind of guesstimate it, but Scott might I have it. <laughs> I have it off the top of my head. No, I'm just thinking for those that so those listen. That, um, for those that are voting on the prom court. Both of you. If, all three um, of you. <laughs> the, the four guys that are on the prom court are uh, host Michael Weisenhunt. Weisenhunt. Uh, Tim Elbing. Also Mikey. Tim Elbing Jr. I don't know who that is. Shan either. Nichols. And Brant Burke. The four, the four lovely ladies of the prom court are Stephanie Weisenhunt. Who dat? Who dat? <laughs> Sydney Burke. <laughs> oh, Jennifer isn't Goodman. That, wait, wait, wait. She was in that movie, right? Sydney Burke. Yeah, yeah. That that one movie. If you bring it, if you bring her a copy of the movie, she'll sign it for you. Oh shit! She's gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jennifer, I saw her sign a beignet once. <laughs> that wasn't a beignet. I actually saw her. Sign <laughs> So then that wasn't powder sugar. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Goodman and Carly Olson. So there's your prom court. Uh, if you want to go over to vote, it's at the top of our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash three sheets. That's where you'll find the vote, uh, the, the kind of uh, the link to vote. And that's where, you can, uh, <coughs> that's where you can vote for your prom king and queen. So make sure you vote for both. Also... Before I forget, don't forget to get your donations in. Yes. Shelter to Soldier. Yes, we, it's important. It's a great organization. We chose this as a group, so please get your donations in. Two prize packages. Mikey's slowly revealing the prize packages. So what have you revealed so far, Mikey? Uh, so far, we've got a, uh, a nice drawstring bag. All right. This is this is a heavier weight material than we gave out last year at the last uh, sheet up. Um, it's actually got a zipper pocket on it, and uh, it's it's super nice. It's got the uh, Three Sheets Nation logo embroidered on it. This isn't screen printed, folks. This is bro- embroidered with like th- thread and a robot. So <laughs> this is legit. Wait, there's a robot embroidered um, into the fabric. <laughs> it's it's a Tennessean are robot. We, wait, are we paying that robot? No, it's oh, a robot. Okay, pay robot. Whew. Slave labor. Uh, exactly, um, and let's see. We've got uh, until, they, until they make us our stainless. Slaves. Well, you know, we've got a stainless stemless wine glass with the Three Sheets Nation logo on it. Ooh, uh, we've got a set of um, Three Sheets to the Mouse 
stickers, which I'm told are kind of like a plastic material that can be engraved and etched with the laser, so they might stand up to exterior use. So I'm not saying to put it on your car, but, good if you but it'd make a pretty cool hood ornament emblem thing, <laughs> I think. And a, uh, a shirt made by potential, uh, you know, prom queen, member of the court, Stephanie, my wife. And what was Stephanie's company stitch. real quick again? Well, I mean, we're not like licensed or anything. It's it. Uh, her Facebook page is Once Upon a Stitch. So we got to give some Stephanie which, some love. If you want a custom shirt, reach out, message Once Upon a Stitch so she can get that started for y'all. She loves the stress. Please do it. <laughs> um, it's actually, it's a stress reliever for her, but... Uh, yeah, the the shirt that was revealed is uh, what's it got? Like a, it's, a, it's got like a like a Mickey, a fun Mickey print on it. Some source for Mickey stuff, just Mickey through the years, on that one. And then you guys, there's there's twelve, di- no, there's eleven different items in each package. Lots of stuff. Um, everything's the same except the shirts. So uh, yeah, there's, all, there's still a lot left to to reveal, and uh, something new is gonna gonna pop up. You know, every other day, and and, and the raffle is uh, going to be while we're down there in BSB, and we're going to quit taking donations. Well, we're going to quit taking entries on the 13th. The 13th of September. Which is a Friday, so I can get all the entries. Which is also the day that the, the uh, voting closes for Cold court, Monday, so October. make yeah. sure you get... So it makes it, sense. It, it does. It's Friday the 13th. Make sure you get your votes in. Make sure you get your raffle entries in. Uh, for the raffle entries, go to sheltertosoldier.org. You'll click the red donate button. It's right there on the front page. Make your donation. Screenshot your donation page when you're all done. Send it to us at three, the number three, sheets of the mouse at gmail.com. And we will take that photo. We'll put you into the entry, but make sure you also tell us whether you're going to be attending BSB or not. If you're not going to be attending BSB, we'll put you in the at-home prize package. If you are going to be attending BSB, we'll put you at the <coughs> event prize package so that you can collect it right then and there. And you could be the uh, the envy of all your fellow sheeters at either home or at BSB. Listen, there's a couple items we haven't I haven't unveiled yet that I'll tell you right now. If you've already made a donation, thank you for it. Feel free to make another one just to increase your odds of winning. Yeah, because you are but going to be the envy of all your friends. Send that okay. email. Last but not least, um, I just put out another message on the event page. Please make sure that you respond to that, that you are definitely confirmed to go to Whispering Canyon if you're interested. If I have to adjust that reservation... It's just easier to adjust it before rather than when we show up. It's also kind of kinder on the restaurant staff. So please let me know as soon as you can. Just respond that you're going and how many's in your party. There you go. All right. Well, look, I want to thank you guys all for joining us this week on Three Sheets of Mouse. It's a lot of fun when we t- discuss Disney news. We don't get to do that very often. We, we tend to keep our shows informative and uh, uh, entertainable kind of thing, right? Entertainment, entertainment. <laughs> uh, so it, it's it's fun to discuss some news. This was a big news weekend. It was it was nice to hear the love that Walt Disney World is getting, rather than uh, thanks Shanghai. We need to get like a press pass so we one of us can go next. Year. Yeah, that's never going to happen. I volunteer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mikey, you cricketing a press pass is not going to work. I meant like do it the real way, but whatever, Scott. Okay. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? They listen to the show. They owe, they owe us that much. They do. All right. Well, look. And more. Like I said, if you want to be uh, be part of Three Sheets Nation, the best place to do that is over at our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash three sheets. Uh, that's where you can find all the shenanigans, all of the debauchery, the drinks, and a lot of the Disney too. Uh, if you can, if you want to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, we're over at Three Sheets Podcast. If you're in the parks, tag us on Instagram, tag us on Twitter. Make sure you put us in your stories at Three Sheets Podcast. Uh, that's where we will get notifications. We'll get you the little click, you get a heart, you feel good, and uh, you're a Disney. So, uh, guys, tonight uh, rundown of all the Disney news. Um, give me some close remarks, Tim. I was totally anti IP cut. 
when we first started hearing rumors about what Epcot was transforming to, but I'm all in for this. I think it's it's what this park needs. It's the most complete transformation of a Disney park so far, and I'm I'm excited for what it's going to bring. I'm I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody at BSP in less than three weeks when this episode drops. All right, yeah, it, look. Tim, you're right. It is a complete transformation. This is a whole new Epcot. Yep. All right, Adam, give me some closure remarks. All right, everybody. So we're literally in, what, 20-some-odd days? Less than yeah, that. Less than that. No, 17 days. 17 days. We're going to be seeing you all. I'm really looking forward to meeting some of the new pe- new faces. Looking forward to getting back together with some of my Ohana. I cannot tell you how excited I am and how much I need this trip at this point. So, if you haven't signed up, even if you haven't signed up for any of the events, please make sure to let us know if you're there so we can even try to meet up for drinks or what have you. So, you can find everything on our event page, like I said, and look forward to seeing you in the parks. All right. Mikey. Okay, two things. First, um, there's some really cool stuff coming. I can't go into many more details than that, but... Just in time for BSB if I can get uh, Facebook to approve it. <laughs> Got some cool stuff coming for all you uh, all you hip millennials but take selfies. Um, secondly, I just want to uh, once again call out this, uh, this little group of people here. You know, while me and Boss have been stuck down here in Houston away from, you know, our family and, and our normal way of life, We've had some uh, some really great, you know, folks step up. Cheaters that live in the Houston area, uh, Chip and Jillian. You know, I think I mentioned it last week. They took me out for for some drinks and, and great conversation. And then this week, while I was uh, cooped up in the hospital for about five days with Boston, um, Aaron Benj, uh was more than happy to be our Sherpa to bring us some 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 food and some snacks to get us by while we weren't. Uh, weren't really wanting to eat hospital food so it's uh you know it's it's a great big world but you know this group has made it a whole lot smaller where it needs to be so um those are just two examples but it happens every day within our little community of sheeters and it happens all across the uh the the globe so um you guys are awesome and i really appreciate everything you're doing not just for me but for each other because that's what, you know, truly inspires, I think, the rest of us as hosts and admins to to enjoy all the interactions we get there in the group. So thank you all, and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Well, look, on that note, I can't, I can't add anything to what you said, Mikey. So from all of us here at Three Sheets of the Mouse, thank you for making our show part of your Disney life. Thank you for your time, this time, and until next time, so long for just a while. There's only one pour and I'm off tomorrow. Mind your business. I'm just saying. I'm just saying you moved on to Four Roses. I didn't say anything else. I moved on to Stella. Scott, I'm listening to you. I'm hearing you, Scott.